Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have arrived at the grand finals for the Risen Divine League. I am Lemons, joined today by Daniel Sun on the desk for this cast. And I am so ready to watch this revenge match, this revenge series between Soulbound Mirage and Oasis Revenant. How about you? I'm definitely very, very ready to watch these teams. And already I can see we got some pretty high level gameplay. It's not so often that you see very uh, meta bans coming out from both these teams. Usually it's just going to be the one tricks that you see their champions immediately taken away. But so far we got some very quality stuff coming out. Azir, Volibear, Caitlyn, Gragas, Graves. Not sure about the Akali though, but other than that, these teams are looking like they know what they're doing. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And on the blue side, we do have Oasis Revenant for the first game. Soulbound on the red side. Now, I do want to mention that Oasis Revenant do come into this series with a free win. So it will be them up one to zero already. So uh, are starting in a, a little bit of a hole for Soulbound, but it's okay. It's okay. That's what miracles are made of. That's what uh, all the comebacks are made of. So we are pretty deep into the draft already here, Daniel Sun. On the blue side, we do have Graves, Akali, and Gragas taken away on that band list and Caitlyn Volibear Azir on the red side first pick of the Lucian and it's followed up by Soulbound's Ash and Elise pick yeah so I really do like the Lucian first pick here from Oasis uh, usually in your kind of first pick of this you kind of want to feel out what your opponent is doing before you really hard commit to something so that's why going for something like a flex pick that can be played in multiple lanes is a very very good first pick up usually you see something in set or karma however both those champions are been nerfed recently but a champion like Lucian, very strong in both the bot lane and the mid lane. So that definitely opens them up to a lot of things in the draft right here. As does the Shen, can be played in both the top and support position. He's going to be seeing if that's a strong lane for him or not. He is pretty strong right down top, though, I will say. Yeah, and a little bit of flexing available to Oasis. I do want to highlight that uh, Elise is not a champion that Best Turtle plays or has played at least too, too much. Um, it's not one of his go-to picks, but I do like it in this situation going for a little bit more of a skirmish uh, style heavy damage jungler. We'll have to see how it works out as the cane is picked up for Oasis Revenant and Scouting Grounds will be piloting that one. Yeah, definitely. I really do think the cane pick is a little bit questionable here. Elise is a very strong uh, early game jungler in both the invades and her ganks, whereas a champion like Kane, he's pretty weak until he actually gets his form after he gets that he's uh probably one of the better has one of the better kits in the game i think a very strong champion but they do need cc they do need a good front line and with the shuttle behind him he should be fairly safe uh once these lanes get six however the vladimir very interesting pick also can be flexed between the mid and top and has been seeing some play in lcs recently very heavy burst mage absolutely insane once he gets three items i'm gonna be looking at this guy during this game yeah, Vladimir is always just such a strong pick and gets stronger the later the game goes. We'll have to see how that goes. Although, speaking of late game scaling options, Soulbound take away the Cassidant. So we won't get to see that for the side Oasis this time. Gangplank looking like the ban for them, though, as the response. Yeah, definitely. We still don't know if it's going to be played the Lucian mid or bot lane. We still don't know where the Vladimir is going, either mid or top. So we are going to see kind of a mix of bands out here from both these but in general it's gonna be a lot of mid lane bands coming out from soulbound mirage saying that they're probably fairly confident that that's going to be a lucian bond we're gonna to have to see if any kind of response is available in the support position either someone who can uh cc him a bit having some kind of an engage or someone to additionally poke him out he does have a very short range right there uh for an ad carry but it's gonna be the blitzcrank band out is a very strong support right now as well a lot of damage uh, a lot of engage, especially if you hit that hook, and overall brings a lot to a team comp. Yeah, I think pairing it up with the Ash would have been really strong, so they just want to make sure they don't have to deal with any picks into that now. Camille being hovered here would be very Ooh. interesting. I didn't expect it to come through, but that is another pick I didn't expect, and it's going to be the Lux for Soulbound. Yeah, like we said, having a little bit more poke to compensate right there in the bottom lane, you know, really make life heck for this uh, Lucian. If we do see him going to the bottom lane, Ziggs can also be flexed uh, between mid lane and bot. So really, I don't really know what we're seeing here. But uh, yeah, Lux, very strong in support position. Did just see some nerfs recently, especially to her shield, which was a big reason she was being picked. Now, she did have a bug on her shield for a bit where it got triple the shield value for some reason, which made her very, very good. Uh, for it but however that did get removed and 
we are just going to be seeing some pretty standard poke mage stuff coming out right here. I'm really interested to see what the response is to this because we really don't have a support or a top lane really confirmed from Oasis yet. Yeah, and I do want to zoom out a little bit and go into the history of this of this series uh, with Soulbound's last ser uh, game series, at least being on Thursday. They have a little bit of a quick turnaround. It's a couple days. They have faced Oasis Revenant before. It is who knocked them down into the loser's bracket to start with. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is they made it all the way here. And one of the, the key compositions that they love to use is like that Gragas Yasuo, especially Steel City Warrior on the Yasuo, dominated the series last Thursday. So it's funny to see them go with something a, a lot different in game number one uh, in this one. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, we see a little bit of an evolution in, in the draft and, and maybe they don't have to go for the Yasuo Krags combo. Maybe they can pull something off like this. They do lock in that Tristana to finish it off. So it is going to be Tristana mid with the Vladimir top. And Bard was the support pickup for Oasis. And it's looking like Lucian is potentially going to be staying in one of those solo lanes. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to be checking out whether or not it is the Ziggs or the Lucian that is going to be played there in the mid lane. I think that potentially Ziggs could be a lot uh, more of a difficult matchup into the Tristana. You know, he wants to sit pretty far back, throw his bombs at you, clear the wave, and not give you too many roam opportunities. Champion like Tristana has that very big range on her rocket jump, can look for great all ends. That combined with the slow that she gets for landing it could mean like half your health bar. Uh, going down every single time she chooses to engage. A champion like Lucian also is an 80 carry, the very strong early game. I think it makes it a lot more of a skill matchup up there for Oasis. But otherwise, this is looking like a very, very cool game to be watching. <laughs> it's definitely a good game to start us off here in the series. Although, it's it's a very interesting predicament to be already down 1-0 in a series coming into it and yes it is because of things that have happened in the past that got you to this point but for soulbound like that's just a, we a very weird way to enter a series although they're they're not shy to adversity they're not shy to the the climb that they've made and so seeing again harping back onto the seeing this composition that they've molded for themselves in this first game it, it feels like a lot is laying on this first game and that the the morale the mentality and the way that the drafts are going to go and when you when you do pick these pieces and you have a lot of really strong scaling in certain aspects you're looking at long games and that can also drag in mentality and so i'm really really excited for this full series and to to see how soulbound come into it because i think oasis revenant are definitely the uh the top dogs in this one and they're they're feeling really confident definitely you know they're coming in they're in the winner's bracket they were the ones who knocked out soulbound mirage and they have that game up to help them with this series right here but let's talk about these comps for a second right here i think the first thing that i look at when i notice this is early game versus scaling from a lot of these teams you know we have an early game 80 care yeah he does go crit and we do have the zigs with us as well a lot of teams when they do go for something like the zigs it's really not so much as the late game damage although you do have a lot of that with your bombs and with your big ultimate especially if they're all grouped up around that baron pit usually you pick him up so that you can get a lot of early damage on the towers get a herald and turn one tower into two you know you plop that herald down yeah. and you instantly uh get it with your w there's so much value uh in a strong early game with that six and i think that they definitely have the tools to end this one early uh from soulbound mirage whether or not this one goes to 30 minutes i think that will give soulbound mirage a lot more uh chance to come back with that ash with that vladimir and with that tristan as well who does have a strong early game but does have very good scaling as well so i think that's gonna have to be an interesting one to be watching right here. You agree? For sure. And I do want to look on the other side here and uh, highlight the fact that Oasis Revenant need to get the ball rolling. Um, obviously, you're looking more towards that level six when you get the global with Shen and Hubris make, looking to make those kinds of plays. But really, it's scouting ground on this cane that needs to be making moves early on. He needs to be getting around the map. He needs to be getting the essence. And he needs to be affecting the lanes because... Yes, you have some strength in the later parts of the game, but they have a lot more. And so you've yeah. got to use this mid-game power that you have in the Lucian with the Bard roaming, the Kane power spike once he gets his form, and Shen level 6. Like, 
you have to be able to use that effectively. If you don't, that, those are going to be signs to me that this game is going to go late and that they are going to be able to push it and the fact that Soulbound is going to take game one. But So yeah. my, my thing is the onus is on Oasis Revenant to show us in this game and to start off this series why they are number one. I completely agree. And while we're still talking about the cane, I do think one other thing I'd like to point out is that Usually when you are in a competitive game, you find a lot more value in the red can, you know, with the knockups, with the CC, with the sustainability in a team fight. But I'm looking at four and a half range champions on the side of Soulbound Mirage. And I don't know about you, but that kind of forces you into a blue cane. I mean, you're probably not going to get the red cane until that time runs out about like 14 minutes. Even then, that's going to feel really bad. So it's definitely going to be interesting to watch how Kane really chooses to approach this game whether or not he tries to go for a lot of early ganks you know get those early orbs and wait down his timer to go for the red or if he decides to you know go for something like the dark harvest or electrocute and just go all in towards that you know hype montage blue cane that uh, i'm sure the chat is going to have a lot of fun with well we do know scouting ground likes to play those aggressive chants so we'll have to see how it all unfolds on the rift for game number one as we're going to be hitting a spe spectator delay so don't go anywhere
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have made it onto the rip for game number one of this technically best of five series here between <laughs> Oasis Revenant and Soulbound Mirage. As we hit the rip, Daniel Sun, I just want to say one last time, I am so excited for this series. The run that Soulbound have made the stories that have been told, I, I'm just going to shout out Gofrino. He's not here tonight. He couldn't make it. He's got to work. But he was building up the anime storyline last Thursday for Soulbound. And I want to say it sticks real true today. And I want to see it unfold just like any other good anime we would love. <laughs> I would definitely love to see that here. And already we're seeing uh, some not so anime play style from this. A fairly standard five <laughs> point from both of these teams. Getting a little bit of vision there in the river from that cane. He is going to be getting his uh, sweepers lens, oracle lens, to help him out there. But yeah, look at these jungle paths right here. Both junglers are going to be starting red. I mean, they're not going to be matching each other there at the uh, skull crab at around three minutes or 315 when it does spawn. But a really interesting choice here from Lee. She's actually going to be trying to play off of her bottom lane, despite having a fairly aggressive lane uh, on the side of SBM over here. So hopefully she can make something yeah. happen there when she does decide to show up. I do want to point out one thing for Oasis Revenant here is Slayer is playing Lucian, but he is lane swapping to mid and Glacier Freeze playing that Ziggs is going to go ahead and go to the bot lane with Paralysis. So we have a little bit Ooh. of differentiation there, but it is going to be the Tristana v Lucian ADC classic matchup in mid lane. Yeah, exactly what we're... Uh, used to things from real season one stuff from uh, both. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. If it was Ash versus Tristana, that would definitely be some season one stuff right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, already seeing some fairly standard stuff. I noticed this clear over here from the leash. She is going buff, buff into her crop, most likely. Get that level three. Get a very early presence there in the bot lane. Meanwhile, the cane, it looks like he's actually going for a full clear in level three off his bottom side. Whether he decides to go to continue into his uh, top side jungle or try to make himself known either in the top or bottom lane has yet to be seen. Yeah, press D boy getting a bit of pressed early on here. Um, hence the name, but <laughs> Vladimir does have a little bit of a rough time early on, especially with Hubers playing that Shen. He is going to be looking to play aggressively as we saw there. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that, but it is up to oppressed E boy in the late game to show why they picked this champion. And that's what you're going to be looking for now. Best turtle, looking for a bit of an invade, not going to find anything. Might be looking mid though, Slayer, getting jumped on with the rocket jump. The cocoon landed, the bomb might be enough, is it? No, too early on the ignite, not going to do it either. Both summoner spells for Slayer burned, but he gets out. Yeah, definitely might see some kind of follow-up here uh, from Lise, actually. She's very good at early tower diving, so that would definitely play into her strengths. And Tristana is a very good champion yeah, tower diving too. Go for it. We got the cocoon, didn't land the rocket jump in there. If they get the kill, they get the reset for Steel City Warrior. He doesn't even need it as they get first blood. Yeah, really, really great play there over by uh, Best Turtle and Steel City. She missed that cocoon. However, it didn't even matter. They got the slow from that Tristana. She uses her repel to follow up that. And with that execute damage on that Elise, it's just going to be an easy place over here from Best Turtle. Meanwhile, Scouting Ground actually did decide to go for sort of a faux full clear. They ended up skipping his Gromp, but he will be going for that early Scuttle Crab, establishing some kind of vision there in the uh, top half of the map. A little more control, too, and he's going to have his way with the enemy team's camps. I got to say, this does feel kind of bad here from the game because you get so much power in going for these early ganks. He is very good at clearing camps, but if you do want to evolve into that uh, higher tier champion with the new kit, you do have to eventually uh, go for some ganks. So I hope he goes for something top here. Yeah, I, I do have to say, though, that if you aren't going to be getting those ganks early on, at least you're getting a, a decent farm lead. I mean, he's up almost 10 onto the Elise, and he's been invading for the for the farm. So she's going to have even less to build off of. But like you said, it's still better to get the kills. If she gets another one here in the mid lane, it's going to be <laughs> worse. She didn't, luckily. Uh, she shows a little Lucian <laughs> emote there. No big deal. Now, maybe in top lane is where Scouting Ground was looking, but... The vision is going to scout him out, so he's not going to be able to get anything. Yeah, scouting ground will get scouted. And I got to say, really good reactions over here uh, from SBM Slayer. He did not have that bush warded, so that was just pure reaction time over there on his dash. Maybe on the bot lane, taking a little bit of harass. Nothing going to so come from damage. that, though. But yeah, look at the top lane, the actually, right now, though. Uh, 22 CS to 34 right here in the Shen versus Vladimir. Now, it is range versus melee. 
But still, that is a little bit ridiculous that you're missing that much CS in this kind of a matchup where you do have that threat of an all-in. Yeah, like we're seeing. Yeah, it's definitely rough, man. Those auto attacks hurt. Woo. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's it's a rough time for sure. But I think it's going to be a little bit volatile up there. We do see a bit of a collapse towards this dragon. This is a mountain dragon to start us off first one of the game. We'll have to see both junglers hovering around it. Ooh. Yeah, really good spot out right there. They caught him though. That's going to be the light binding as well. And Scattergun gets jumped on. Does he have the health here? Best turtle needs to be careful at this point. He's going to have some healing from the combination there but flash forward from the havoc they're looking for another kill this is going to go over to steel city warrior another kill to the side of soulbound mirage and what a wonderful start in this series yeah i gotta say really good plays over here from soulbound mirage like we said they do have a lot of scaling over there on the map but the at least kane matchup is just so one-sided that they're going to have just so much extra pressure to work with from this. And I'm actually really surprised they decided not to go for that early Mountain Drake. You know, having that threat there of the soul combined with the natural scaling of some of your champions would provide a lot of utility there. But it looks like she's just trying to establish the more Scuttlecrab cryo in that jungle. Very true. Maybe even looking at the top side as Hubris playing a little bit over aggressive, but Oppressive Boy needs to be careful. He did plop the Hema Plague, so the healing's going to be coming through, and Hubris needs to flash. That's going to be going forward. Best turtle. Picking up another one. has been so active around the map all game long, and that's a difference maker. I completely agree. Absolutely everywhere on the map from this, at least. Now, keep in mind, she does have very bad scaling with that pick, so that's definitely what you do pick the least for. It's the bridge. Yeah, I completely agree. You even see sometimes people go like uh, Moby Boots on that kind of champion just so they can just keep ganking, you know, go for a Dark Seal, fiddle into the Medjai, just be everywhere, and ultimately just try to make someone rage quit. Now, I don't think that's going to be happening in this competitive game, but it happens all the time in my solo queues, so maybe we'll expect that. I have yet to be seen. <laughs> I do want to highlight that Dragon number one was picked up. And uh, they were able to secure that first Mountain Dragon. The next one is the Cloud Dragon, which means Ooh. we either, either get the script souls of the ocean or the Infernal. Yeah, definitely. I got to say, I really like both those uh, dragons. Yeah, you know, nice. Ooh, so much damage there in that early shen. But yeah, these dragons. Uh, a lot of people have been very highly valuing the ocean, but more lately, they've been kind of realizing that it's a lot more comp dependent uh, when you see whether or not it's going to be very, very useful. You know, if you have a very strong front line and a lot of poke, you can obviously proc it a lot, get a lot of value out of that. But if you have like more assassin based champions, you know, like that uh, Elise or someone kind of like the Tristan, it, it might not be as good. But the Infernal Drake that people have been valuing very highly and actually Cloud Soul as well, getting to see a lot more of that. Just having those early ultimate cooldowns is a lot of value in that. Is indeed, and a lot of standstill here at uh, eight and a half minutes, but still three kills up. Our Soulbound Mirage sitting pretty in the driver's seat. Scouting ground still has not got enough essence to transform, but it is only eight and a half minutes. You, you were looking around this time, maybe 11 minutes, 12 minutes to be really getting close. Um, mm -hmm. And then when it starts getting later, you start feeling real, real bad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, the laning phase usually lasts until about uh, 14 minutes. So you definitely do get a lot more fights there about that 14 and a half, 15 minute mark, you know, when you get that second Drake on the map, you know, potentially the second Rift Herald, although it looks like they're not going to be taking that first one too quickly. But we might have something happening around here, a little bit of a fight between the least and the game. Yeah, it's just going to be scouting ground backing off. Not gonna, not gonna do anything. Did get the scuttle though, so it feels good on that end. But Ooh, didn't want to go for the full fight. But meanwhile, top side might be in some serious trouble. Hubris, gonna be a victim of his own hubris. As he <laughs> was very ex overextended there. Best turtle gonna come in, finish the job. Down bot though. Nox Joe almost went down. Flash over the wall from Steel City Warrior. The bomb is ticking. Uh oh. But it's not gonna be enough to do the actual final blow. He still gets the kill after all of that. Scouting Ground uses his ult to buy some time, but it is not enough. I really wish during all that action, I could have seen what happened to Nox Joe Bot, but you got to expect it was just a great combo from Paralysis and uh, and Glacier Freeze. Yeah, definitely. Paralysis and Glacier Freeze. Meanwhile, Nox Joe, he did try to initiate that fight with his arrow, got cleansed by that Ziggs, but we really didn't see anything happening there. But 
yeah, I gotta say, so far the story of this game is really looking at uh, Best Turtle here in the jungle. You know, he doesn't have that strong of lanes to be working with. Sure, the mid lane does have a lot of early power right there, but you know, the fact that he's able to do so much on the map so early and really keep this cane down, you know, stop him from getting any of his oh, souls, no. really just goes, uh oh. Tower dive What's the here. number one rule in League of Legends? Attack the global ultis. And here they go. Hubris going to be the just unfortunate fatality there. Oh. Steel City Warrior goes down as well, though. So that's a big shutdown into the Shin's pocket. A little bit of, four, I guess, 450 gold. But Ooh. First Tower does also go down. And the gold lead is circling just about 3,500. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say, it seemed like a little bit of a misplay there uh, from Tristan. I believe she used her E, her bomb, on the tower uh, instead of that Shen. So, probably missed out on a little bit of damage. Might have been able to kill her a little bit quicker, but either way, really good play from everyone, establishing a lot of early priority, but fight here on the bot side. Other than that, Mystical Journey not gonna be enough. The Cocoon goes through. Man, Scouting Ground gets obliterated there, and so does Paralysis Knox Joe. Picking up his first kill of the game. ADC finally getting some love. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good play over here from all the members uh, of the side of Soul Bound Mirage. Really just establishing a lot of early priority. And we didn't really expect them to be able to pull that off this game. A lot of tools to be working with in that Elise, in that Tristana, in that Ash era. But ooh, one thing I do got to say, I really like, we're actually seeing the Mana Mute come out here on the ash has been talked about a lot as probably one of the better builds however mainly in competitive a lot of people have been pulling out that blade of the rune king as that first item so though if you don't know the man immune is a very very effective item particularly after you get it upgraded around three items when you have a lot of ad and you really start seeing the maximum value out of it you might see something right here though i get caught out here and this is just very unfortunate for oasis maybe just trying to knock the rust off in this game um uh, but I, I just have to give props to Soulbound Mirage. They're carrying the momentum from that last best of five series right into this one. And it's looking like they didn't even stop playing because it's 10 to one right now at 12 and a half minutes into the game, Danielson. Now yeah. another another dragon does fall first one for Soulbound as well. And they're just gonna continue to build it here in the mid lane flash from best turtle going for the kill. He is gonna use the repel to get out from the tower aggro, but is it enough to get Slayer? He's going to get turned around on. The shutdown goes into Paralysis's pocket. That's not what you want to see. But Lucian does pick up one kill at least in that engagement. And they're starting to look to turn things around for themselves. Yeah, very good uh, play over here from the side of Oasis. I really did not expect that Shen Ultimate or the Bard to be there as quickly as they were. Ooh, big play here. Going to be a bit of a <laughs> bad time. Just to say uh, for paralysis, but that's kind of the hole you built for your, or the dug your, for yourself. I guess that's the theme today, Daniel. Son, we're just digging holes left and right. Is this holes the movie by Disney? Um, but the Jesus, fact of the throwback. matter is, <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is, you're still trying to use this mid-game spike for Oasis Revenant, and it's not really coming online. And unfortunately, the gold is in. Mostly the right pockets for uh, Soulbound Mirage, and the damage is really coming online right now. And against a team that is going to be super strong in the later parts of the game, you have Lux scaling, you have Tristana scaling, you have Vladimir scaling, and even Ash to some extent. That it, it just feels like you're up you're up against the wall with a, a, a time clock in front of you because like there's going to be a point where you just stop winning fights, and it feels like it's already happened, but there's still hope somewhere. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, you look at the some of the items right now, and while we're on still on the topic of Disney, we don't even have the Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior upgrade uh, from the cane <laughs> just yet. He is up on farm, but he is very low on soul stacks, and he does not have a lot to be working with right here. For a team that doesn't scale as well as uh, Soulbound Mirage, you have to be looking at the clock right now and saying, all right, what do we work with? When can we look for our fights? We do have some kind of gold over here, both on the Lucian and... Ziggs is farming well as well, so maybe we can go for some kind of a cheese pick uh, at that before a objective kind of spawns and try to look to claw this one back in that kind of a matter. But we are going to see Elise making something happen bot lane. Turtle's been doing it all game long, and honestly, this bot lane's been a little bit quiet, but 
the side of Soldan have been performing very well. They've been aggressive, but now this might be the turning moment. The TP coming in from behind. Tempered Fate's not going to hit anybody, but Hubris a little bit hesitant to react, but he goes in anyways. Best turtle, first target. TP's finally coming down. That's going to be the Vladimir joining the fight. There goes the Lux ulti. It goes across. Doesn't get a lot of damage, though. Scouting Ground goes way too deep, and he falls. Next one is Slayer, but they can they get the return kill. Steel City Warrior looks to have disconnected during that fight, unfortunately, but they don't get the pause. But here comes a pressed E-Boy. This is the Vladimir. Oh, my God. A triple kill for him. Oh, a quadra. He Can he get the Penta? They don't want to go for it. Now they realize what's at stake here. They've got to bet it all. Nox Joe says, I don't care. A pressed E-Boy is the one that's way behind everybody. He doesn't care about the Penta. Uh. I do, though. Havoc, not going to get it. Uh, Steel City Warrior looks like he's just fine. So it was just a mid-disconnect. But the fact of the matter is... 4-0-4 oh, on Vladimir, 150 farm right now. He is riding a steel train all the way home. Absolutely. Getting the quadra kill in a 4v5, just absolutely insane over here from a press deep win. I wanted to talk about this earlier, but he actually went for a very greedy build uh, in the lane right there. Usually you want to go for like 20% CDR and a Kindle gem and a uh, Fiendish Codex to give yourself a little bit more to work with in terms of like health regenerate from your pool. However, this guy went immediately uh, from that Phoenix Codex into a Spellbinder. Is now following <laughs> it up with a Death Cap. Just has so oh much early God. power to That's be working so with. I know, right? Oh, you think he hurts. has, yeah, without even proccing the Spellbinder, he's working at 430 AP at 16 minutes on a full AP Vladimir. Oh. It's just nutty. Yeah, I don't see, aside from a Merc Treads on Illusion, I don't see any magic resist on anyone from the sides of Oasis Revenant. So. Yeah, this guy's looking pretty scary right now. And maybe Oasis Revenant having that time off didn't really help him. Maybe they, they've lost a little bit of that fire that they had because <laughs> Soulbound Mirage are bringing it. They got the flamethrower out right now, and it's crazy to think that the best of five series last Thursday was so neck and neck, so back and forth with the reverse sweep coming out from Soulbound Mirage and just able to show up just like they did in that game number five they stomped that game number five there was no question about it and it's 15 to 4 right now you're almost at a 10k lead in gold you're you're feeling just fine i completely agree and with this third dragon spawning you have to see that we need something from the side of oasis revenant they can't just continue to give up every single objective they need to maybe look for steel kane does have his upgrade so he can possibly look for something with that instant cast W, but I think they just might be giving this one up. An Infernal Drake for a full AP Vladimir and 280 carries is not what you want to be giving up for the side of a waste of Well, I thought the steel was going to come in from the, yeah. the Mega Inferno bomb, but did not get it. It is secured. Best mm -hmm. turtle going to be able to get that one. So now two dragons on the side of Soulbound. And we'll be looking for that. Although you gotta, you gotta admit though the fact that like it's okay to give one over. You're not, you're not wanting to at this moment because the momentum is not in your hands. You don't want to give up as much as as you can. But it's still only two to one uh, in dragons oh. in that aspect. But Hubris finally found his match. I mean, he was taking those really aggressive turns early on. He was the one that was putting in the pressure. But look how the tables have turned. And a press D-Boy was able to secure that kill. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Rift Herald doing some nice work to the tower. Do they want to dive it? I don't know if that's the play here, but you do have Vladimir pushing mid lane. A big calling reigns across the front line there. They aren't able to connect it as the least repels. He's going to be in some trouble coming out of it, though. Paralysis wants to go for it. Best Turtle trying to get some health there. He does smite the Krugs, but it's going to be a flash forward. Scouting Ground able to take that kill. He goes in with the Umbral Trespass. Is not going to be enough to do anything, though? He doesn't have a lot of health. He picks up the return kill, at least. It's a one-for-one one in that one. But it's a double kill for Scouting Ground, who's finally starting to pick up some gold for himself. But the entire time, meanwhile, at the headquarters of evil, it is uh, Oppressed E-Boy pushing in power. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I got to say, some of these fights look very close uh, between both the teams until you remember that it's always a 4v5. Uh, from SB Mirage. They always have someone pushing there in a side lane, getting more control over the map. But I gotta say, the most surprising thing in that fight was actually how effective uh, Scouting Ground on that Kane managed to be, going in just balls to the wall there uh, with that upgrade and just getting two kills off of it. Hopefully he can look to snowball 
off that. I believe he picked up that serrated Dirk, which should help him a lot there in the assassination. Now, I'm pretty sure you do go for the uh, Dusk Blade on that champion. A lot of extra value right there in that 1v1 potential with the uh, bonus damage. I believe it still gives bonus damage on his passive. Is that correct, or is it just yep. slow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very good item for Kane. I do see some of them rushing that uh, Yomu's Ghost Blade. However, I'm really interested to see what this guy is going to build. Either way, it is 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Baron is on the map, and the pressure is being applied from SD Mirage. Big stuff. Ugh. Two and a half minutes for another dragon to spawn, though, so a little bit of time before we see anything too crazy. It looks like Slayer is going to be the one that has been assigned to deal with Oppressed E-Boy. And that's a matchup you generally see in the top side, but uh, it's it's a little bit uneven at this point with Pressed E-Boy being so far ahead in gold and so far ahead in items. You just have to be really careful he doesn't just get the under tower. See, they're committing two members now with Hubris coming down as well, but it's it's really just because nothing else is being moved on around the map. Best Turtle is looking to pressure this side of the jungle now, and they're actually going to be looking for this top side tower, but originally the defense was trying to come out. Oh no, Hubris is just going to get the dash for it. He doesn't have enough damage at the moment, but it is still scary to get caught like that. You know, uh, he tensed up a little bit. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I was squeezing my butthole a little bit there, but yeah, we are. We might see a repeat of what we saw earlier. We don't currently have the Void Staff complete on the Vladimir, and meanwhile, Shen did pick up just two Magic Mandals to help oh, him survive. Oh, late but... to threes, getting caught there. He does survive with that Seraph, so at least going to use the Repel Slayer, getting low. The calling going right over top, though. Not going to be enough damage. Yeah, a lot of value in that stopwatch right there. They are getting several members of both teams very, very low right now. And you already know that my blood mage at the top lane right there is licking his lips. However, they will be returning to the base, healing up, but they're going to be paying their inhibitor for it. A lot of priority in the map right now. You do get that middle inhib. Weren't really pushing in other lanes at the moment, so they're not going to be able to capitalize on that. But it looks like they're just going to get a quick little reset. Head back onto the map. Another dragon spawning in 50 seconds. Baron still weighing heavy on that side of the map as well. I'm sure we'll start seeing some riskier plays coming through from Soulbound Mirage as these objectives come come up. Yeah, I completely agree. We do have a dragon uh, spawning here in a minute. I think this has got to be an er an easy uh, soul dragon for the side of Soulbound Mirage. I don't anticipate any kind of... Uh, fight or response from Oasis Revenant. They're just that much stronger on the side of Soulbound Mirage. Whether or not they'll actually try to uh, trade anything else on the map for it, you know, you group three people right there on that dragon. That does leave you open to uh, taking that Baron with your team. They do have the AD carry in the, Z in the Lucian as well as the Ziggs and some DPS from the game. So that might be what they need to do to try to get back to this map, but I just don't think they're in any kind of position to be taking any kind of fights right now. Yep, and it looks like they're just going to fall back and defend as this dragon spawns. Nobody is nearby to contest it. And it's going to be Soul Point for Soulbound Mirage. Yeah, Soul Point providing a lot of pressure basically everywhere on the map. And, you know, they have a lot to be working with right here. And they're Are they just walking to Baron right here? I do see the pings coming out. Is this just going to be a free Baron for the side of Soulbound Mirage? These guys are taking everything on the map. It would definitely be risky. I don't know if that's the play to go for right now. Maybe they're just feeling that confident, but you just, with these members, I mean, you still have Ash towards the bot side. You're not really prepared for it at the moment, but I do like this vision game and the vision clearing. And if you just look, it feels so bad for Oasis. You, they have no vision. Every piece of their jungle, I mean, they have a little bit, but every piece of their jungle is warded by their enemy. And we do see the Baron finally started up already half health here as everybody has arrived. And nobody's going to contest this one either. It is going to fall. And so far, so good for Soulbound Mirage. Yeah, interesting choice there to uh, not go for the recall after taking the Baron. They probably have a lot of gold in their pockets, so they're not really as strong as they can be if they are going for the siege oh, right here. But they're going to be fighting. That feels really bad. He does get out from the ulti there, but he did get stunned up for just a little bit. There goes the Tempered Fate. It's going to be a lot of damage there. As scouting ground goes forward, he's Ooh. onto the back members. He's onto the squishy members. Look at the damage coming out, and they finally get everything they could ask for. Holy cow, scouting ground, though. Almost getting dropped. The flash comes through from Best Turtle. He still falls. Oppressed the E-Boy all by him. He's lonesome, and he oh also God. goes down. Big shutdown. That is huge gold going to the pocket of scouting ground, and a big turnaround for Oasis Revenant. 
Yeah, and I gotta say, definitely a misplay over here from Soulbound Mirage. You know, you had that gold in your pocket after taking both the Dragon and the Baron. You chose not to back, and then you chose to look for a fight uh, over against Oasis Revenant for really no reason. I mean, you have the scaling comp. You have a lot more to be working with right there. Just keep taking things off the map, you know, maybe wait out, get the soul, and just wait till you have a lot more power to be looking for this, because... You know, if you keep a, if we get another one of those, I don't think this is really Soulbound Mirage's game anymore. I think that this could easily be swung right here. A lot of gold going on to a lot of very big carries on the side of Oasis Revenant. But, uh, I'd like to pump, pump the brakes a little bit. I mean, they still are like six k gold ahead, and they have a, they're about to be able to get the soul here the next time it comes up. And you still have the scaling factors of the Tristana, of the Vladimir. It's just going to get worse and worse as the game goes on. I do think that there is a shining light right now for Oasis Revenant. They have a lot of possibilities, but they're still a long way to climb. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. They do still have one Baron available there on the Lux, so whether or not they'll actually try to use it for some kind of a bot lane push, and I gotta say, you be gotta be a little bit more careful with how you're going for your picks on this one. We do not want to repeat how that last fight went. We all gotta focus on that first target from the Ash Arrow or Lux Binding, and just make the game unwinnable for the enemy team right here. Turn it into a four v five, get all that power for yourself, and get some deductions really off the map. Commit. Oh yeah, definitely. We got all five members down here. They might get a fight over the tower. It's just going to be a setup. Scouting ground gets hit by the little spiderling, but nice wave clear coming out from the side of Oasis Revenant. They're going to buy even more time. Yeah, definitely. We do have Lux going back to uh, get the Baron empowerment on those minions. I believe it doesn't actually speed them up anymore, having that Baron. That was something they removed like at the beginning of Season 10, I think. So not a lot of value in doing that, but Ooh, we're seeing a fight, fight here. here. The final spark coming across. Scouting ground gets dropped. There goes the Enchant Crystal Arrow. Tempered Fate landing on the two members there, their own though. And that's Hubris getting dropped, the tank of the team. That's a big amount of damage from the Mega Inferno Bomb, but it's not going to be enough to dissuade them taking these inhibs. Mm, definitely Hubris getting very low off of that one, but they're going to get so much value off of the map in these inhibitors. Getting that extra push on uh, both of those lanes is going to mean a, a lot when we do eventually get that. Dragon Soul coming available on the map. I believe that was taken at about 23 minutes. So, yeah, 28 minutes. That's going to be on the map here in about 45 seconds, uh, it's looking like. Definitely going to be going for the recalls. And if there was a time for Oasis Revenant to be looking for a fight, this needs to be it right here. I mean, they are going to be a little bit strong on the side of the test speed Mirage, but, I mean, better late than never, I guess. And it's definitely looking like that with all the scaling we have on the side of SP Mirage. Yeah, the soul is going to be a bit of a nail in the coffin for Oasis Revenant in this matchup, especially being the Infernal Soul, adding that damage to these already very strong members is not going to be fun uh, on the side of Oasis Revenant. So I agree, they have to make a fight here, they have to make a play, but are they too far behind to do it? They have to decide, and you have Stand United available for Hubris. You have TP available for him as well, just in case anything goes wrong. But you've got to get the members down here because they're already starting the dragon. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, big damage coming out there from Lux. But Stand United ooh. did come down, and Scouting Ground got stunned up, but now they have this 5v5 available to them. And it's a bit of a sticky situation here. It does look like they want to go ahead and commit to the dragon. Might not be the cause. The stronger team could just push in. Here they go. Press the E-Boy in there. They do secure the soul. And that could just be the hopes of game one going down the drain for Oasis Revenant. That's a big buff to damage. But Steel City Warrior almost gets dropped by Glacier Freeze. He does have the Mega Inferno Bomb. Does he want to go for a kill? Does he want to pick somebody off? He doesn't have the vision, though. Oh, TB flank coming in from Blood. That one. Yeah, TB flank coming in. He is getting caught out right into the final spark, right into the jump. Steel City Warrior taking that kill. Glacier Freeze trying to make a miracle run here. Not going to hit the Mega Inferno Bomb and still might be able to take him here. Ugh. Nope. The explosion comes through. That nice little animation from the Infernal Soul as you look towards the Nexus and everything around it is burning. Soulbound Mirage come into this series swinging. Starting off one and O oh, against them for Oasis Revenant. They tie it up one to one and start us off strong. Definitely, man. I gotta say, what a game over here uh, from Soul Bad Mirage, specifically on Best Turtle. The amount of power that he was able to bring there into that early game, just absolutely insane uh, from the jungle position. Now, I don't think that 
I'm looking back at this draft, and they did pick that Elise blind, so I'm not really sure if Kane was the pickup into that, especially looking hindsight and what he was actually able to accomplish there in the beginning of that game. So hopefully we can see some kind of other picks pulled out to maybe counter the Elise here in uh, game two, technically three, of this series. But maybe the counter to it will just be that band button. I'm really interested to see what the play is there uh, from Oasis Revenant. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I expect them to go maybe more towards a scaling composition with some little bridge gap in between. Maybe keep the cane, but you need something to back it up in the later parts of the game. And you saw the scouting ground was getting pretty far. He was, he was being able to do something, at least in the later parts of that game. But that, the game was only 30 minutes long, and he had just gotten the evolution at like 18 minutes or something like that. So it, it was definitely a rough time for game number one for Oasis. Though they had some breathing room. They started up 1-0. So now it's just 1-1. It's a flat series. And we'll have to see what they do to bounce back. But Selbaum Mirage looking to continue to chug along as we take a little break. We are going to be dissecting this game one uh, behind the scenes. But we'll be sure to be quick. And we'll get to you with this game number two coming right at you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you didn't stray too far as we're getting ready for this game here with Daniel Sun. It is Lemons. We're ready for this continuation of the series. Tied up one to one with SBM taking last game very, very convincingly. And OR get, having been given that free win for being <coughs> in the winner's bracket and securing that final spot very early on. Now we are very deep into draft already as we have pretty much all of our bands done in the first phase at least. SBM on the blue side this time around. Oasis Revenant on the red. We have Azir, Lucian, and Caitlyn banned away for SBM. Graves, Akali, and waiting on the third band looking like a Gragas for Oasis. First pick right off the bat is going to be that Volley Bear. Yeah, I was going to say they swapped out their Volley Bear ban for the Lucian ban instead. So yeah, getting that early Volley Bear prior definitely provides a lot to their team. You know, he can be flexed between that uh, jungle and top lane, but he's mostly being played there in the jungle. I did think he's still a pretty good jungler. Uh, he was getting played a lot at the same time uh, Seth was. But he did kind of just drop off uh, off the face of the planet recently. There are some kind of good junglers that can fulfill a lot of the same roles in, kind of like the Gragas, uh, kind of like, again, you know, the set. But it's actually, oh, I'm actually going to eat my words over here for a second. Set is being hovered over there uh, by OR. Are we going to see him picked up? I think he's actually very good in this. Hell yeah, dude. Punch Man is in. Let's go. Yeah, I was going to say two very common faces showing up here for Oasis in game number two. As the Ezreal and the set picked up, Senna hovered here for SBM. Could be a very, very strong pick. We've seen late game Senna's do so much damage. That laser beam just cutting people's health bars. And they are going to leave it up to the last second, but it is going to be locked in here for them. So they get to pair that up with whatever they want going into the next parts of the draft. And Nico the hover, that would be a very interesting pick, but it is something that we have seen and something that is also very, very strong. Uh, there, there are so many moments where uh, Nico's pop blossoms can just completely turn fights, and it, it is going to be this time around potentially going through here for Steel City Warrior. Yeah, and I think she definitely provides a lot to this team fight. You know, so far they have a lot of CC uh, on the side of uh, Soldat Mirage. You know, they have a Senna, they have the Volibear frontline, and Nico, her stun right there, or Root. I believe is probably one of the strongest uh, single CCs in the game. I believe it's tied with a uh, dark binding on Morgana Q for like one of the longest single roots in the game. But the fact that it's also area of effect is absolutely insane uh, coming in from that ability. But yeah, not to even understate how big her ultimate is to 1.2 AP ratio. Of course, it does look like she might be played in the support role from that, so I'm not entirely sure if she's gonna get too much AP as to see something like a Medjaz coming out, but she will be matching there by that Yumi, Ezreal Yumi, everyone's favorite bot lane coming out over here from Oasis Revenant. Do you like playing against uh, Ezreal Yumi? I don't think anybody likes playing against Yumi. She sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she can be an annoying cat, but I guess you're more of a dog person. Uh, looks like Nasus sure. is left open, I gotta say. Could be looking for that. <laughs> could be, could be. <laughs> Uh, I, I would hope that the Nico is not going bot lane. I hope that it's going to be something else going with the Senna because I would like to see it in a solo lane where the real pop off comes through. Um, we, I was just about to say we had a no ban, but it's actually Thresh. Uh, so the last two bans for Oasis Revenant are Blitzcrank, are Thresh. So they're taking away those hook champions, they're taking away the big playmakers in the bot lane to make sure that Ezreal can't get caught out by one of those hooks. And we know that Havoc likes to play hook champions bot lane as well. And so you want to make sure he's far away from comfort as, as you can, but he's still got the pike available, which is one of his uh, his big plays. So we'll see. Vigar, Cassidy were the last bands for SBM, though, as they want to take the same bands as they did last time around, but on the different side. Yeah, I got to say, it's kind of weird going for uh, all these hook champion bands when you already have someone like the Ezreal already picked. Traditionally, you can just cast your arcane shift if you ever do get hooked, and it just kind of falls through, especially on someone like the Blitzcrank, who can be a lot, you know, he doesn't provide any other utility to his team, really, besides that one hook. There's like some about the Thresh, I think that might be worth it. But yeah, we are seeing some other picks covered, and it looks like they are confirming that Nico will be played there in that support position. Probably not going to see a support Silas or a support Volley Bear. Although maybe we'll see an AD carry picked up here for this last pick and throw the Senna into the support position. Either way. This well, is I'm just really saying, really cool. you're missing some of the most lethal tech in the game, though. You're missing oh, the Nico top. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, no, no, no. No range top laners allowed from this game. That's not what I want to be playing against. <laughs> <How> about, <laughs> we'll have yeah. to see what it goes through. But Silas Ooh. and the lock in as well as the Lux. It looks like it could be that Senna paired with the Lux bot lane. And then we'll have some solo laners and then Nico and Silas with the Volley Bear in the jungle. We'll have to see, though, as everything gets locked in a little bit later on. But that is a very interesting comp to be drafting for yourself. But hey, they've got the momentum, they've got the courage, they've got the confidence to go forward with it. So they do indeed. And I'm really interested to see what Oasis Revenant's last pick is going to be. It's the Maokai. So going with mm. the tankier style top lane that Oriana was also picked up for them. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at this draft right now and I actually think it might be the Lux mid. Uh, Oriana is a control mage, but she does have fairly short range. So a traditional counter to her would be something like an artillery mage, like the Zerath or Ziggs, or the Lux, for example, did just see some nerfs, but did see some scaling uh, buffs on some of her abilities. So getting all that extra gold could provide a lot for her team. And I gotta say, she's some of my favorite uh, mid lane picks, although she is not very traditional there for that role. I do think if they want to get some kind of advantage here in the draft, they will throw that Nico in the bottom lane and throw that Lux mid. She's very good. You know, she can wave clear with the ultimate, it's like a 45 second cooldown it's insane stuff but i think the real question here is are we going to see the volley bear jungle silas top or maybe reversed what do you think about man well i just have to say this yes silas can play jungle it is a rough time it is not fun mm -hmm. uh, so i don't know if we'll see that this time around but well i mean we have to see i i do yeah. want to highlight i think that oasis revenant composition is a lot better than game one and i think that they're showing a little bit more of us a little bit more stability i guess in it in the fact that you do have some strength you have some scaling you do have a lot of team fight potential and you have that strong strong front line with the lockdown and the maokai yeah i completely agree you have a really good front to back uh, if you are oasis revenant you got the maokai front line you got probably the tank build there on that set jungle and you got yumi keeping everyone healthy as well as the ezreal or uh, just to provide that damage but you know Smash Brothers Melee over here, sorry, Soulbound Mirage, does have a lot of interesting tools to be working with. You know, the Senna, not a very classic uh, DPS-oriented uh, AD carry. I believe she has actually slightly lower DPS than uh, the Ezreal in this game, especially when considering how many tanks they're playing into in the Maokai set and kind of in the way of the Ezreal. But they do have a lot of poke. They do have a lot of punish there on the engage in that Nico, as well as the ability for Silas to steal basically any ult he wants over on the side of uh, Oasis. Now, I think, yeah, he could use either of these very effectively, but they have a lot of options for how they can play this game. It can be very flexible uh, in what they can be doing. But other than that, I really do like the composition over here from Oasis Revenant. I think that they have, it's easier to play. You know, you have natural scaling and it, 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 you just have fewer things to mess up with that kind of team comp. Indeed. Uh, I do really like the Silas into the Maokai if he does go into that, because I think the matchup can be a little bit rough, but later on, uh, it can it can even out a little bit. And then the engages from the Silas, I think, will be really pivotal to them, because that's where they're going to be looking for. But the Maokai will always just be so strong. If he gets ahead, he can stomp that lane. So I'll have to see how that all goes down. But I just think, circling back to that Silas point you were mentioning, and he has a lot of really good ultimates to grab from and a lot of things to choose from that can that can be really pivotal in the fight. So uh, we'll have to see. But I think that there's a lot more avenues for SBM, but there's a lot mm -hmm. more, uh, I guess, sturdiness for Oasis Revenant. I completely agree. I completely agree. You know, I think overall, I really would like to see the bot lane pop off over here from uh Soulbound Mirage, you know, they have a lot of poke uh, into slightly less poke and a little bit of healing on the side of Oasis. I do think they have a lot more advantages there. You know, they shouldn't really be getting punished too hard over here by this set jungle. He is melee, so it's like really all he can do is just run at uh, the side of Soulbound Mirage. Meanwhile, the Volley Bear has a lot more tools to work with, and I believe in a pure 1v1, he actually uh, comes out in top. So it's definitely going to be the jungle matchup. That can be watched right here. Not to take away from any of these lanes or the top lane in particular. You know, Silas, I love the type of champion. You know, a lot of uh, creative things that he can do and his melee. But I'm not entirely sure how he goes there into the Maokai. I believe after the Maokai gets his bomby Cinder, he might do pretty well. But Silas is another champion who usually uh, 
usually likes getting a few items on him. A little bit of CDR, a little bit of AP before he really starts looking for fights. Other than that, I think this is going to be a very exciting game too. What do you think, my man? I think so too. We finally have the positions locked in here. It does look like it's going to be the Silas v. Maokai in the top lane and Nico v. Oriana in the mid lane. Senna, Lux versus Ezreal, Yumi in the bot lane. So there's a lot to be seen, a lot that could happen in the early game and a lot to be excited for. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to want to miss the action. We're going to get through a bit of a spectator delay here, but right on the other side of this break, we see who goes up in the series.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Summoner's Rift, as we have kicked off this second game of the series with Oasis Revenant and Soulbound Mirage. We have a little bit of spiciness potentially here, Daniel Sun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We are seeing some very interesting comps right here, but one of the interesting things is the invade that we're seeing over here uh, from Soulbound Mirage. Let's see if them get something on this map, guy. That'd be pretty epic if they did. Oh, they know he's there. Ooh. They might be able to catch him. The flash is coming out from everywhere. Hubris needs to get out, but the flashes were used Ugh. too early for Soulbound Mirage. He throws up the, the Pepe hands emote, I'd like to call it, and uh, <laughs> just kind of walks away from it. Yeah, yeah. Malka is a bit of a tanky boy in that early game. Certainly no uh, Lux or Teemo in terms of ease to kill. Has a lot of... Uh, base stats to be working with there but yeah other than that it looks like they're just going to get some vision and go for fairly standard stars actually seeing a red start over here from scouting ground we saw what he was able to uh accomplish on that blue start earlier the game actually it was best turtle who was the least sorry flipped a little bit of mine i got a little confused it does happen sometimes <laughs> but yeah That's we are seeing the red start from best turtle too and i mean he's probably gonna be looking to top pressure that top side of the map early. Pretty intelligent considering he should be easier to gank over there than an Ezreal. That's Turtle is going to be spotted out in his pathing though, and so they will know where he wants to trend towards uh, as they see him walk across the ward towards his blue side of the jungle. Sky and Ground going to take a lot of the same path, but uh, towards his bot side. But I would also be looking at potentially this mid lane for Scout and Ground to be able to get Glacier Freeze something going on the Orianna to set up the later game fights, especially around the Dragon Pit, would be very beneficial to them. Yeah, I completely agree. We were just talking about this in the uh, pregame lobby, but they have the Predator, actually, on the Volley Bear. Not a very standard pickup right now. I know a lot of people are going Aftershock, but I believe he went Predator last week, so probably a lot of value uh, in that rune. It, I believe since it's changes, it doesn't make you as fast, but it does proc instantly, so... Ooh, hold up. We are seeing. Okay, okay. It looks like there's a little bit of a pause going on, but we ended up missing that one. Really good yeah, for us. Not gonna be anything. Best turtle the top of the outside, though. He's almost getting low, though. Press Boy has to flash. Remember, Hubris doesn't have his flash because he burned it earlier. He's going to be in some serious trouble here. The crab comes out. Oh, no. What is going on? As uh, Best Turtle going to be able to help secure this one. Hubris going to go down. First blood into a Pressed E Boy's little pocket. And the bot lane might be looking at second blood as it's going to be a drag down fight. Scouting ground slew knocks Joe, but might be looking at a, his own death there as Havoc was able to put down a good amount of damage in return. But it is tied up one for one. The response kill coming down on the bot side for Oasis. Yeah, really good play over here by both these junglers. Getting some priority in the lanes that we already talked about would be easier to gank. Uh, Set did use his flash there, but he does have the hex flash over there to still make plays. And it looks like he's actually going to keep pressuring this same lane. Both junglers having this idea, but Volibear will be scattered out on that ward. Meanwhile, Set, he's sitting on a bush. He is waiting. What are we going to see from this man? Might be able to see a bit of something, but it's going to be a bit finicky. They are pushed up pretty heavily. And right under tower is not somewhere you want to be against uh, Senna and Lux. Is that double root will be a serious problem, but he is going to commit a long while here. But yeah, I think the play is here. actually to like bait yourself on that Ezreal by like getting hit by like some kind of CC or whatever, really, because they don't know they have the set right here, and that's basically instant. Oh, hex flash! Yeah, here it comes. He gets the knockdown as well as knocks Joe falls, and that's another kill going over. Meanwhile, top side, another response going over, and it's just. A complete opposite side play from both teams. It's two to two. Everything's tied up. Both sides of the map looking good for their respective team. But man, this is a little bit crazy. Yeah, definitely. We saw in game one how good a pressed E-boy was uh, with the lead for himself on that Vladimir. But whether or not his skills are actually going to translate over there onto someone uh, like that Silas. Or if he will be able to have as big of an impact as he is in that game one. We are seeing so much pressure over here from that volley bear. So he's saying... I know which basket to put my eggs in, man. That basket is looking like Silas over there. Either way, look at the rest of the map. In the mid lane, Nico and Oriana actually going fairly even. I thought this was going to be a pretty bad lane. 
over here for Nico, but she's not falling too far behind in the CS. Like I said, I really would like to see Nico there in that support position, sending uh, Lux into the mid lane. I believe she has a much better matchup there into that Orianna. But uh, other than that, we're seeing fairly standard stuff across the map. Pretty much. Um, it's a lot slower of a game this time around, it feels like at least. We aren't getting anything too crazy so far. But I'm sure that'll turn uh, pretty quickly. We do yeah. have a Mountain Dragon as our first Dragon of the game. So keep it on script. Still a possibility of the Infernal Soul or Ocean Soul. We'll oh, yeah. see which one it gets. But... Definitely. We have set. He's going to be spotted out on that ward in the bottom lane. But he is hovering once more. Just applying so much pressure right there. But with the priority in both the bottom and mid lane. Bottom lane attempted. He is going to be looking for the Dragon maybe. Press D boy missed the abduct. Unfortunately, I think he would have had a lot of damage on the hubris right there if he would have connected it. But they're getting really close to level six. Level six is across the board here, and this is where the action is going to turn up. You have so many possibilities that open up here for everybody. And here, speaking of possibilities, it's going to be a three v three. The hex flash goes backwards because he times it, and he might be caught by Best Rebel, uh -oh. who is going to get the speed forward. And Scouting Ground gets very low. He does have the Haymaker available. TP coming in the backside. That is the Nico. He gets the root, the damage, the double root. Scouting Ground goes down. Meanwhile, Hubris had to flash in top lane, or he was going to die to oppress D Boy, and that is the momentum that Soulbound needed. They look right at the dragon, and here we go, right back to game number one. Absolutely, really great play from the bot lane over there of uh, Soulbound Mirage, hitting root after root. I thought that scouting ground was actually going to get out there uh, with his phase rush. Probably. Yeah, they're able to turn that into a kill, into a dragon, and oppress E Boy again, looking absolutely beautiful in that top lane. For some reason, I think the uh, Lost Chapter in Starkseal is slightly stronger than just the Ruby Crystal. He definitely has a lot of power he's working with in this lane. Lux, I, and that's the thing, where when you're feeling confident and you have this momentum going in your favor for Soulbound, you see the roam starting to come out from Havoc. And this is something we saw last game where they were just in constant communication. They were constantly knowing where the play was going to develop and how to be there in the right position. And, it's showing again in this one where they just have a superior feel of the game and they're just being able to move around the map. Now, we saw them get a bit overextended last game. They did get punished multiple times, so it can still happen. There is a huge possibility of that, and they don't have nearly as big of a gold lead as they did last time around, uh, but they're still working on it. They're trying to build back up to it as the Light Binding did miss, but a lot of damage down. Stormbringer goes down just to get across the wall. They're going all in for Ooh. this one. The Pop Blossom comes down. Slayer! Falls to the ground, and that is a big commit, but a huge win for SBM. Definitely. I didn't even see the Volley Bear and Nico coming there into the bot lane until it was already too late. Just absolutely diving that tower, running so much pressure there uh, for these teams. And I got to say, they played that game one absolutely beautifully, but they are playing this game two even more beautifully. It is like the Kate Upton of uh, beautifulness. Either way, we are seeing some fights happening in the bot lane, but we are seeing the lead slip slowly and slowly away uh, from Oasis. Looking very weak right now. Definitely things in favor of SPM at the moment, but not far, just about a thousand gold. Uh, they did secure that first dragon. Next dragon is the Ocean Dragon. So no Ocean Soul this time, but still possibility of the Infernal or Cloud, which are still the two really, really good ones in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Infernal and Cloud are probably... I think Especially they're slightly for this better game, than the Cloud, edge. honestly. Or for oh. this game, both of them. But, like, the, the cooldowns across the board, if it, it does become a Cloud Soul, is going to be insane. Oh, yeah, just getting a... Oh, my God, that could be, like, a 30-second cooldown there on the Silas Ultimate. Pro maybe even proccing it twice in a I've team fight. I've seen Lux's ult get down to 22 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can definitely get that. Seconds. And then if you kill somebody, you get half. So it's, like, 11 and a half, 12 seconds. I it's know like you could get down that flow like when Ultimate Hat was in the game. You know, you would always go oh, to the yeah, of That was such a good room, but you know, it was very good on Karthus. So uh oh, happening here on the set. Scouting Ground gets caught. He doesn't succumb to his wounds there, though. Yeah, he looks survived. like he was going to get hit by that Lux binding, but somehow he got out, I guess. Maybe just missed. It was, it was definitely close. True Shot Barrage coming across. Not going to hit Nox Joe, but Havoc does have the angle here. Just depends if he wants to take it. 
As Nox Joe really just wanted that farm, but <laughs> Presti Boy has showed up all the way down here. Slayer's got to say, why do I have a revolving carousel of people in my lane? Uh -oh. That's going to be a big pair of whiffs. Oh, man. He misses his stun, and he also misses the Ezreal ultimate. Yeah. Press E boy, you know, uh, it's pretty easy to play a champion like Vladimir because he has no real skill shots other than maybe his ultimate, but uh, not looking very strong on this champion. Uh-oh. City Warrior getting taken out. That's going to be a showstopper right into it, but the Pop Blossom buys some time. He is not going to survive very long, though. Does deliver scouting ground to Best Turtle. Those auto attack cancels are not going to be good for him. Still going for it. Stormbringer available. Oh, he yeah. gets the smack down on the pit boss himself. He's looking for more here as he's going for Glacial Freeze, who doesn't have a lot of mana, but he's turning around. Hubris gets stunned. Is a lot of people on him. Can he turn it, though? Slayer going to be beamed down by Nox Joe, and Hubris going to look to be the next to fall as they engage. They get the kill. And a press the E-Boy coming away with that one. 7-3 to three after all this chaos. What did I say, Daniel, son? Things are going to start turning up, heating up, right when the ultimates come down. And as they do. I completely agree. I completely agree. Turning that one catch-up onto the Nico, she did almost get away, but the Orianna auto attack did follow her into several kills over there uh, for SB Mirage. Really, really great coordination from these guys. Managed to turn a negative into positive. Looking just so good so far in this series and yeah you, know, you said this earlier but it was oasis revenant who knocked xp mirage into the losers bracket right what do those earlier games look like uh pretty pretty good by 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 oasis that's why it's so it's a little bit shocking although it's like the classic classic story of a tournament it's the the number one seed they get that week off and then they come in and they look flat they don't look like they're prepared they look like they're just covered in rust and right oh, now, yeah. that's what Oasis is feeling like to me. But hopefully they can shake it off and bring us the performance we know they can have. Because these players are great. And we've seen so many pop-off performances from them before. I really need to see it pick up this time around. But right now, it is all SBM all day long. And they've got to make a change in that. Oh, yeah. Some little fight here in the top lane. But you know, when you're fighting against someone like that Maokai with some magic resist, and all you have is your... Uh... Hextech GLP 800, you're not really having a lot to work with uh, in that matchup. Yeah, we were talking about this also in the pregame, but Nico going uh, Spellbook on that champion. Now, I think she might have meant to go Glacial, but she misclicked, I guess, because I definitely see no scenario where going your Hex or your uh, Spellbook is any better than going for Glacial here, especially when you're going for that GLP. So would you say it was a misclick? I don't know. I mean, I, we do see a lot of people grabbing the spellbook nowadays, and it is very useful uh, as it gives you the flexibility in the parts of the game. So, as hey, if they win, maybe we'll get a chance to ask him and see if he, what he says. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, definitely. We didn't mention this, but they did get the second dragon uh, on the side of SB Mirage, meaning that this is going to be the Infernal Souls. Oh, oh yeah, on point, baby. Hell yeah, two Infernal Souls in a row. Definitely not something you see too often here on the caster decks. Usually I'll just get like a uh, cloud or mountain like five games in a row or something awful like that. But I'm really happy to see the Infernal Soul it leads to a lot of hype plays and it's definitely going to be a, a highly contested next few dragons here on the map. But speaking of not so highly contested, we actually have the Rift Herald available on here. I believe this is still the first Rift Herald. Did they yeah. really take that first one? Oh, no, yeah. It's still oh, bot lane. the first uh -oh. one. But again, Slayer and Paralysis, the focus of SBM. As they get out with the flash, the last little bit of damage there, Donnie Shadow is just not enough. That was super, super close. But the full committal, the five-man stack there from SBM on the bot side actually doesn't work out this time. And they lose a decent amount from it as they are, are going to lose that first Rift Herald. Yeah, but they're staying they're bot on a board. <laughs> Uh-oh. I guess they're trying to go for this one tower, but trading Rift Herald for tower might not be worth it, actually. I mean... You can potentially get multiple procs from a Rift Herald, but getting just a guaranteed tower is definitely something to be said. Maybe you get something like that mid lane tower, which does potentially provide a lot more value on the map and just like cracking open those uh, bushes for your team. But overall, kind of a weird trade over here from Oasis Revenant. Not too optimal. I thought they were going to commit there to the Rift Herald play top, but they did not want to as they weren't feeling very confident in it. So they still have that play at some point. Scouting Ground going to be looking at that in the next few minutes, I'm sure. 
But we have three minutes till another dragon spawns. Got a while till another Rift Herald spawns. You're going to be in a bit of a farming simulator here for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And with something like a farming simulator, you have to give the advantage over to the team that has the better scaling. Now, we have a tier being built on both these 80 carries. I do want to give a slight scaling advantage. You know, I don't even want to say who I can give it to, because I think Sada can be a very good champion once she gets, like, five items or something like that. But Ezreal, once he gets his 45% CDR at two and a half items, is an absolute monster, especially when combined with the Yumi. So I think maybe the side of SSBM has a slight scaling advantage with the Silas, with the Volibear, and with the Nico, but it's really hard to tell who has it in this game. It is. It's going to come down to a lot of execution. As we're speaking about execution, you see a little bit of fight going down in the blue side of the red team's cool. jungle. He does get out of there with a flash burn. Have it getting caught here, maybe. Yeah, Nico had her flash available there. She should have toggled it up, but ooh, I see luck. Live forward, though. Yeah, there's the Nico flash. The final chapter came out. Slayer still alive, though. This whole time, Grasping Roots is used. Not going to get a lot for it, though. Nox Joe on the side of this fight. They don't want to push forward. They're playing so scared, and rightfully so. Yeah, they're getting a lot of extra vision here in this jungle and not really having to trade a lot for it, besides those really low cooldown ultimates. But I think if you're the side of uh, SP Mirage, you should be looking for more towers right now, really just trying to increase this gap that you're building uh, against the side of Oasis Revenant. Ooh. Oriana ultimate actually just gets wasted right there. The next dragon spawning in about uh, a minute I think, he was, half. I think he was using it to clear the minions. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I thought he might have just whipped it. Yeah, but either way, we have another dragon spawning here in about a minute 15. So we might see some kind of a fight over here from uh, Oasis Revenant, but, you know, we got to see something over here to stem the bleeding. It's otherwise, it's just going to repeat, repeat a game one, you know? Yeah, all right, there's just... They're just going to lose the second tier tower in the bot side. They just don't have the defense. They don't have the, the priority there. They had scouting ground, but he didn't want to commit to it. Yeah, definitely. Scouting ground, he did a lot of plays there in the early game, particularly around bot, but he has not made a lot of things happen so far in this game. Ooh, Maokai ultimately. Oppressed you, boy, is doing a lot, though. He has a lot of healing. The Ooh. abduct not going to land, though. Yeah, really, really rough right there. He has 20% CDR right now, so he is going to be having a lot to work with in these trades. But once he gets something like the Sheen, he's definitely going to be have just so many more tools to work with uh, right here. But I think he's actually going for the Luden's Echo before then. Not, probably not going to be too good there uh, against solely the Maokai, but it is going to be very, very useful against some of these squishier champions like that Orianna or Yumi if uh, they do it over side to match him. But yeah, Volibear is dancing. They're just giving up every objective for free to him. That is one happy bear. It is. Uh, I do want to point one worrying trend, though. The CS department is not so great for SBM, but I guess when you're getting the kills, it doesn't really matter. The final spark coming out on the bot side of the map. The shockwave is going to be a lot of damage, but as you said, the dragon secure. That is the third dragon, putting them on soul point already 18 minutes into this game, so they are just chugging along on that one. But you've got a 50 CS differential for Ezreal against Senna. That's big. Uh, you have about a 40 for the Orianna, but then you look at the top lane, you have 30 for the Silas. So it does counteract a little bit, but I do have to say they're doing fine in the lane. They're getting the gold where they need to, and they're getting some items under their belt. So as long as they're working towards that, you're okay. Hey, no, I love to see. Ooh, Fight. stuff's going in, though. Yeah, they do get the final chapter, but it's not enough to get the kill. It is finally Ooh. True Shot Barrage going to pick up Nox Joe, but everything else around them uh, has been oh. destroyed and a double kill comes through best turtle goes on a killing spree to boot and that's going to be another tower falling yeah great job over here by both best turtle and steel city warrior over there with an absolutely huge ultimate uh from that nico in that fight she did have that level 11 meaning she had a little bit of bonus power especially against those lower level uh bot lane players but yeah they have the Baron coming up here in about 45 seconds. They're probably not going to be able to get it, but they will be able to get a lot of vision priority uh, in the topside jungle of Oasis Revenant. So let's see them getting some things off the map, getting their priority, and setting themselves up for some really big objectives here in the next few minutes. So, bit of devastating news. What's up? I'm pretty sure Scouting Ground wasted the Rift Herald. Oh, wait. Did it just run out? Yeah. It, well, it's been a while now. Um, um, but uh -huh. it was at the beginning of that last fight, it was almost up. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure he wasted it. Oh, yeah. So that feels real bad. Yeah, you hate to see it. You know, they traded. They've been making so many weird trades across the map. He just... had the opportunity to use it right when he got it in the top lane. Like, if you just use it there, it's fine. Yeah, honestly, oh, I'm not entirely tough. sure what goes on in the mind of uh, Mr. Scouting Ground over here. It didn't look too good. <laughs> Mr. Scouting Ground. Yes, yes. Didn't look too good on that cane there, game one. And looks okay the first few minutes here of game two on this set, but has yet to really match the same pressure that is being applied by best turtle in either of these games, really. You gotta say, I don't wanna call it a jungle difference, but this one has all the characteristics of a jungle difference here in this series. Really rough stuff. I have to say, it's a bit of a team effort, I feel like, on the side of Oasis right now. They haven't had any of those pop-up performances that we really are looking for them to have, and they just have been kind of slowly bleeding out in this game, at least, which is not at all what you wanna see. But they have the possibilities to pull it back. They have a better comp, or they have a, a strong composition going the later parts of the game. Scouting Ground needs to pull the trigger here because his teammate's getting dropped. The final yeah, part did. came through. He gets rooted up on the backside of it by the Grasping Roots. He finally made it to the fight. He doesn't have the damage. He just can't do anything. He just gets dragged down right onto the level oh. and double kill over to press E Boy as it just feels like SBM. We're going to start rolling away with this one. Yeah, Presti e Boy just absolutely looking beautiful with his lead. I'm always surprised by the amount of damage that champion, like the Silas, actually has. That combined with the CC just makes him such a good duelist. And even if you're Hubris here on that Maokai, you really just can't do anything against this guy with such a lead. Now, they have so much pressure working with against this. I really think they should have probably looked for the Baron a little bit there. You know, having two people dead is usually the signal for that. However, they don't have too high of DPS with that Senna. AD carry it would probably be on Folly Bear and Lux, and maybe the size being the main DPSs. But yeah, either way, you need some more items before you really attempt something like that. Just play it safe. You know, you have Dragon spawning in about uh, a minute and a half over here. So if you can look for some kind of a pick to really help yourself secure that, that would be absolutely beautiful over here for uh, either team. Really, I gotta say, Oasis Revenant, you gotta do something, man. Look for a big fight. You can't just keep turning over on this one. I feel like we're going to get a lot of what happened in game number one here if the soul goes over to SVM. And uh, they aren't really in the position to contest. You've got about 40 seconds left until it spawns. And with the vision game being not there right now, with the, the pressure not being there, with this gold lead being what it is, you're just in such a predicament. You don't know where to pull the trigger. You don't know where to make the play, and it gets so hard. And from an outside perspective, obviously it's easy to point out what's going wrong, where you can, uh -oh. move, where you can go through. And uh, not getting caught out is a general rule, I feel like. The final spark came through. Nox, Joe went and oh, killed the man. Low, Best turtle getting low, grasping roots on the side, but a press e boy is in the fight now. He's going to join a lot of damage coming along with him, but the healing is there. Press e boy goes down on the backside, though. Hubris looking to take the fights. Maokai has gotten tanky, and Slayer just picking him off gets one shot down after another. Havoc the next to fall, one more shot. Not going to be enough. The healing from Nox Joe, but chase down still going through the double root. The flash forward from Hubris, he gets Nox Joe, but the mystic uh. shot. <laughs> didn't connect he's so close there Best it is. what are you doing get out of there um so after all is said and done they actually have a true possibility of taking their first dragon in this game yeah definitely i gotta say and wait is this the first dragon in the series uh for oasis no they got one last time ah and they might get a bear kill right here too he's looking very low oh so close oh. no havoc oh, oh the flash with got ground nice little move i like it Hell yeah, you love to see it over here. Scouting Ground finally coming in big. Same thing for Hubris over there, looking absolutely huge uh, in that fight. They do potentially have the Volley Bear here for the still, but I think it's just a free dragon over here for Oasis. Really good play by these guys. Might not provide all the momentum they need to turn this one around, but hey, you're starting somewhere. And when you have an even scaling cop, unlike the first game, anything is anything. You know? Good job by these guys. One dragon is one step closer to evening it up, but you got to think that uh, next time it won't be given over so freely. Or maybe it will. Maybe it'll just be given up for a Baron, but at least so freely, right? And the fact that you're seeing a big push here in this mid-game, in, in the later part of this mid-game for Oasis Revenant is really nice to see because I think they do have some very strong points 
in this game specifically and really looking at Slayer on the Ezreal, he's been popping off in these fights. Yes, he hasn't been the focus for the enemy team, but uh, hopefully that doesn't change and he can continue to be a pop-up member of the team because he's their real damage. Yes, you have the Orianna, you have the engage from the set, but the damage is coming from Slayer. If he's not alive, if he's not pumping out those shots from the back line, you're not going to have anything. Yeah, Slayer right now on that Ezreal is probably the strongest he's ever going to be in this game. You know, you just hit your 45% CDR, you're working on your Death Dance, and the next time besides that, maybe you can go for some kind of uh, Grievous Wounds, you know, that item right there for Ezreal. But right now is when your real power spike is on that champion. So especially when you have a champion like the Yumi just buffing you up a little bit, you're definitely feeling large and in charge. Definitely start looking for another fight right here if you are Oasis Revenant, because this is where you can start to turn this one. Say CS leads are so worrying though, man. Like you've got a 50 CS lead for Silas, you have a 40 CS lead for the volley bear, you have a 50 CS lead for Oriana, you have a 80 CS lead Ooh. for Ezreal, and it's just so nuts that they're still so far in the lead. Yeah, a little uh a little confusing uh, over here. Definitely a lot of one-sided matchups over here, but it really just reflects where the junglers decided to uh where the junglers decided to prioritize in the early game. Maybe not so much in the uh, Glacier Free Steel City Warrior matchup, but ah, uh, you know what? You can still blame the jungler on that one if you guess. I wouldn't solo queue. But uh, other than that, yeah, we still have the Baron on the map. Not a lot happening right here. Not really working to abuse this 45% uh, CDR Ezreal power spike over there. He's popping off with these uh, little pot shot cues in this mid lane. Kind of just feels like they're A-ramming right now. Not a lot of macro from either of these teams. It's just the fact that there's just a Baron on the map. You don't have another Dragon for another 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So you're really just looking at finding an overstep or just farming. And they're doing a pretty good job of getting Vision set up forward and making sure that when the Dragon does come up that they have a lot of Vision on the incoming team. But they are ready for this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we still have some dragons on the map right here. The last one was taken at uh, 24 minutes, so they're going to have about another two minutes before that one spawns in. In that time, you know, we're just waiting. Someone's got to get picked off. We got to do something to control some waves. It does look like uh, SB Mirage is doing a great job of keeping them pushed and try to keep the map on their side for when these objectives do end up coming up, but... Yeah, I kind of would like to see at least one team try to threaten a Baron and look for a fight that way. They are just so much stronger on the side of SB Mirage. So even with the Baron debuff on them, they could probably look for some kind of a fight where they could pop off. But other than that, we are seeing some fairly important uh, item completions right here. We are seeing a more of a reminder finished over here on that Senna. Meanwhile, the Ezreal does have his Death's Dance, making both these champions a lot stronger right here in their favorable matchups just in time for a fight over the dragon yeah maybe a little about a minute early i believe it's going to be a minute 15 oh yeah one minute exactly before it spawns right there at about 8 10 i think is what we're going to be looking for but a blue buff actually looking like the bear is hungry for that uh, we'll just have to see whether or not there comes a fight out of this one or if he just gets that for free it does look like we're going to get a reset for glacier freeze get some mana before this dragon fight they are going to position in front of it though and it's going to be really rough, I have to say, for Oasis Revenant to get into this fight to really be able to make something happen there. And yes, you're a little bit off, but I do feel like as the weaker team, you need to be positioning. You need to make sure you're putting yourself with your best foot forward in that kind of fight because this is... It's a little bit do or die here uh, with this big fight because like we saw last time with that Infernal Soul, they just pushed to win right afterwards. And this is not a good start. They could be getting caught out. They do see Best Hurdle initially though as the root does land on the slayer they aren't gonna be able to follow it up though Ooh, that was really close yeah with their positioning right now it's gonna be very difficult for them to approach that dragon uh they are gonna actually find a way around that but we do have a nico oh that was the fake one <laughs> didn't even realize but yeah dragon is on the map right here and we are seeing it kind of started off yeah they're looking to get on Best Turtle, who has to run away. They wanted to push the fight. The Root is landing on a Hubris, but you got to be careful about the rest of the fight. Steel City Warrior looking for the flank. The Grasping Roots used by Press e Boy. Here comes the Pop Blossom in the back. Not going to hit anybody. The Grasping Roots did, though. It buys so much time. Who's going to get the Dragon? It's getting low. It is secured by Best Turtle as the Infernal Soul is alive. 
and the damage is raining down. Slayer trying to pop off. Look at this man's performance. But does he have enough? He does. Maybe he gets one, but he gets shut down. And next goes the kitten. Next goes the tree man. And can they do it? Have oh. they <laughs> the last auto attack? Oh, he deserves it. to take a couple extra tower shots for that one. But it is feeling a lot like game number one where SPM took the Infernal Soul. They took the fight. And now they're taking the base. Yeah, and with that buff, things are just looking so rough right now for Oasis. You're down so much in this game. You're down 9k gold. Uh, you haven't taken a single tower off the map or any objective, really. It kind of just feels like you're, aside from those 9 kills, you're almost getting perfect gamed over here uh, by SB Mirage. These guys are just looking so good. And with that uh, early game one win that we gave over to the way of Oasis Revenant, because they were the winners here, uh, in the final, you, you kind of wouldn't expect a little bit much for these guys. They, we, this could have been done in two games from these guys, but they are going to be sending us to a third here on this technical best of four, best of five on this one. So I don't know. I got to see something come over here from OR before I just say that this series is easily going to the way of SB Mirage. Definitely hope for it. I know that I would love to see the Oasis Revenant that I know uh, show up in this game series. And they, they almost did. It felt like they were they were doing well for themselves. And some of these fights, man, Slayer is literally slaying it. Um, there was just too many members and not enough gold in the pocket of, of the Ezreal to pull it off last time. But you see the possibilities. You see the bright moments. It just makes it that much more sad when it doesn't work out. But for SBM, you got to be riding high. You got to be feeling real good after these two performances back to back. And now you're just so solidly in the lead here. You've got to continue to press it. And they're looking to do just that. Oh, yeah. We have the set ultimate taken. Oh, that's going to be big. Yeah, that's showstopper right into it. Scouting ground is going to go down. And that hey, is you know, one going over. You know, although we do see the set cut out right here, they look like they're going to be starting the Baron. So we might see a repeat of uh, game two where we saw one guy go cut out, but a miraculous 45 was won uh, by Oasis. So the Baron buff is definitely the little buff you need to help you pull that off. And Ezreal is always looking Slayer, I love it. Oh yeah, my man's so going aggressive ham. right now. I don't know why they're sitting behind it. They're taking so much extra damage right now. It's not need. Look at that. Ooh. The shockwave that came through and everything falling apart for SPM. Oh my God. What did we just watch? That feels so bad bad why are you even there why are you making the play slayer with the heads up play though to come in be this just annoyance of an ezreal and after that shockwave there is no hope in that fight for SBM. yeah i think he's actually a free baron for them uh, on the side of uh, oasis revenant they're gonna walk with this and they're gonna have a lot more power uh, to be working with win the rest of this game but volley is actually waiting in the wing right there in that uh, mid lane bush so if he gets the steal, that'd be insane, but it's looking like the bear might be turning into, uh, I don't know, jerky, or whatever your Red Dead Redemption 2 meal was right here. It's getting very low. Oh, he's Stormbringers away from it and still goes down. Now the Baron's still going to be started up here. There is possibility. Havoc has Final Spark. Maybe the steal. The Donning Shadow, maybe as Ooh. well. Oh, Final Spark used way too early. Donning Shadow? No. Okay, no. They it's actually, it. you know, Final Spark is a very good tool to uh, steal Barons with, uh, particularly when you get your combo or, like, any kind of a passive proc there from the Lux. I believe, like, just an E and Ultimate can do, like, a thousand damage on a Baron, almost like outsmiting any kind of jungler over there. Ooh, but I'm looking at the chat real quick, and it does look like uh, SB Mirage put forward a surrender vote. Uh, it did end up failing 2-3, but kind of gives you some insight into what their mental is looking right here. Losing fights with the Infernal Soul for themselves. Elder spawning in about a minute 45, so we have to see if any kind of turnaround will happen right there, or if that objective is going to happen and uh, just be given over to Oasis Revenant as well. Only time will tell. I'm a little bit interested in that surrender vote. I mean, obviously it's troll. Um, yeah. But <laughs> how troll is it? Mm. It gives you a little bit of mindset into it. I just think it's kind of funny. You are seeing a bit of a lane, a, a lull state here. We have an Elder Dragon spawning in a minute and 15 seconds. Uh oh. Meanwhile, we get to oh, are you serious? on the action here because the support, Mr. Havoc, has to go to the restroom. Ah, uh, you know, a little unprofessional over here, the Havoc. I got to say, like, 
unless you're you know like about to bust you gotta just like hold it in if you're in the middle of a game i mean come on we got viewers over here and i have to ask the question uh if we are going to be gambling on this mr lemons are you thinking it was a number one or a number two <laughs> why do you put me in that situation uh i'm gonna take that to the number one why not yeah okay okay i mean it is pretty fitting of your name you know squeezing the lemon is a euphemism for uh something but yeah you know i mean here's my thought process if it's in the middle of a game and it needed to happen absolutely right now that kind of sounds like a number two for me you know <laughs> yeah i mean i guess i, I mean you know you have a water up. bottle sitting next to your desk you can get rid of a one number one oh, very easily goodness. you know that's the gamer solution. Anyway. We are so it looks civilized like here in Risen. All right. We are civilized. <laughs> Man, I'm filling in. I'm filling in. This is <laughs> whatever. This is, this is I am seeing some Discord. R's. Yeah, whatever. I am seeing some R's from both these teams. So we should start up here uh, in just a sec. Yeah, I'm seeing some moderators asking about uh, <laughs> uh, the wording, but uh, a little unfortunate right here. But yeah, we are 34 minutes in this game. Elder spawning here in about another minute. They do have the Baron buff available for themselves on the side of Oasis Revenant. So, with their support, having just finished taking the bathroom, I think they have a lot of power coming into this Elder Dragon fight. And they definitely need it if they don't want to just throw this early lead. You uh, you have to. <laughs> I mean, you need to continue the pressure. Slayer is starting to really do well with this pick, and the combination of the Yumi and Ezreal is really starting to turn online. Best Turtle going for the engage there. They don't have a lot of the follow-up, though as Steel City Warrior is going to get DC'd, but reconnect immediately. Man, there's some serious internet problems here. Hubris having some health problems of his own, though. Press E-Boy coming to get the kills. Grasping Roots not going to be enough. The Abduct misses. The healing from Hubris is there, but both of these boys can heal so, so much. And finally, the... Oh, this is so sad. Like, I... I'm, this is I'm, you're breaking the play-by-play's ankles here, okay? I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. All right, the Presti boy is finally going to get the kill after a little bit of help from Havoc. And after all is said and done, you have four members alive for this fight for Oasis Revenant as the Elder Dragon is started. Now, they do still have their jungler available. However, Best Turtle is up to levels. However, they might just be going for a fight right here. Ezreal Ultimate is taken. Not too much damage, though. Ezreal's a pretty tanky boy with that. Well, they catch Ooh. him. That's it. You catch out the Ezreal, that's the damage. That's the main cog in the machine for Oasis that just gets ripped out. Got that's him not a cog, that's an Ezreal. Make something going down, but he <laughs> is the one to fall. And that is a free Elder Dragon. Give it over to the soul men themselves. And they yeah, can absolutely. really just do whatever they want with this. Oh yeah, definitely. They just got to have complete control of the map uh, right here. This is... It is a best of five, by the way. So this would be the uh, two games uh, going to the side of SB Mirage. They did get the one free win for Oasis Revenant because they were on the winner's bracket. But it looks like they might not get too much use out of that the way this series is going. Uh, looking very, very rough these first two games. This is going to be the double inhibitor going Somebody away. Somebody auto-attack that inhib, please. Oh, oh, wait, my, oh my, my god, why? <laughs> Somebody. Are you okay, now they see it. They see it. Still sitting. Um, oh no! But they can't commit to it. It's too late. They did. They just. I. They had two members around that in him. That. That's like nails on a chalkboard right now. I just. My eyes hurt. Yeah, that is a little bit rough over there. Not <laughs> Thank entirely you, sure why. But I'm just gonna shout out Mowgli for the zoom in on the in him. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Truly, truly next level production that we have over here. Uh, at Risen. Gotta gotta have some reason to come join this one. Either way, we are seeing... They do have the Elder Dragon buff running out here in about another uh, 30 seconds. It's not a very long buff. I believe it's only about a minute and a half when you get it. So it really just means turning that one fight uh, into a winning team fight yourselves and potentially ending the game off of that. Or threatening a fight off that. But either way, they will be going for that last turret there in the top lane. This would be the last of the non-inhibitor turrets actually only four towers left on the map compared to all the towers that they actually have themselves <laughs> on sp mirage these guys have not lost a single objective this game hey some from... of them are getting close okay daniel son all ah. right they're getting close <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely and i think that yeah the outer turrets don't actually regen it's just the inhibitor ones that uh regen is that correct maybe the nexus ones yeah. regen no, okay yeah. okay it's kind of weird how that works you know what? They got to bring back those uh, laser turrets. That's what I'm looking for. The Remember laser? I hated those so much. 
Because <laughs> the, the damage was like so off, and it was not cal like I feel like it was just not calculated right. Uh, meanwhile, we're we're Josh and we're laughing over here, but SBM are looking to end the game. They're going for their third inhib at the moment. And they are going to be able to take that one as they are going to finally get there the last auto attack on the bottom side in here and that's going to be double super minions spawning into the base oasis revenant yeah and with the dragon uh baron sorry spawning up here in about another 45 seconds this is going to provide a lot of map pressure to them for getting that off of the map taking that l at a baron buff into the enemy team's base and just using um, all those baron empowered super minions to really Slayer end this one but they might actually not be going for that Slayer just used his cleanse, so you got to keep an eye on that one. But it is Oppressed Evil who gets dragged down to the dirt first. Grasping Root is coming through. Nox Joe going to dodge out, though. True Shot Barrage almost gets him. That was super, super close, but they actually make a defense here. They buy some time for themselves, but their base is in tatters. And not having their star player, Oppressed Evil, is going to mean they're probably going to end up delaying. Uh, that Baron take for a little bit. Like I said, the macro play right here is definitely use those supers and the pressure you get from them. Take that Baron, you know, or maybe look for a turnaround fight or just like run out the clock while you don't have enough people like uh, wave clearing in the base. But you definitely got to use this advantage while you have it because that middle inhibitor is probably only going to be down for another like probably minute and a half. You think they took that middle inhibitor a lot earlier than the other ones. Yeah, they did. So I'm sure it will be here pretty quickly. But you got to think of the positioning and how to play this game for Oasis. You just really are surrounded by enemy vision. You're pushing yeah. your base by double super minions in every single lane, and you just can't get out onto the map. So as these objectives spawn, as these things come up and you just can't get there, you, you have to use so much of your tools to even get out there that when you get there it's not even a point to fight because you're you're already expended and we're seeing that now it's a, the slowest baron you ever did see uh being taken here by the center of the volley bear but there's just absolutely nothing anybody can do from oasis yeah like we said uh senna is not the fastest baron taker she will eventually get it but uh I did see someone in the chat asking about that. She does have 89 souls available to herself, giving her 66 AD, 100 extra range, and 60% uh, critical strike chance. Once she does overcap that critical strike chance, it will be converted over there. There's the showstopper, the though, right into the oh. team. They're going to get a lot of damage on Nox Joe, but look at the turnaround, the healing. Ooh. It doesn't even matter. Nox Joe is almost dead there, but he's back in the fight, and they're pushing forward. Their base is falling. They're surrounded. This is not what you want to see from Oasis Revenant, but it is what is happening before our very eyes as things are falling. That's a big shockwave. Nox Show does fall, but there's still four members strong. Can Slayer, can Glacial Freeze, and can Paralysis make the miracle happen? It's not looking likely as the engage comes through. Stormbringer goes down. The Nexus is the target of Steel City Warrior, and that is SPM going up 2-1 in the series. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely huge game two over here uh, from SB Mirage. Now, that game one looked very, very one-sided, but game two looked even more so. And I got to say, we did have a very big fight coming out over here from a SB Slayer, but 11, 6, and 2 on that Erosor, but unfortunately, it will not be enough right there to stop the onslaught over here uh, from SB Mirage. One more game will end up giving them this series. And I got to say, so far... If you had to guess, uh, based on this way the series is going, and you know, we're probably going to talk about this later, but who are you thinking is the MVP so far? Oh, man, it's so hard to say. I, I think they've been just performing across the board. I think Oppressed E-Boy has been having a great series so far as well, but everybody has been performing really good. Uh, I think they've, they've all just been on par uh, or better than what we'd expected. I do want to give a quick shout-out, though, to Slayer and Glacial Freeze in that matchup in that game specifically in game number two they were so strong they were the hope of their team oh yeah but it just wasn't enough they just didn't have it the rest of the team just wasn't there for it so i gotta give a huge shout out to them and hopefully backs against the wall last game possible here you started with a, a free win in the series and now you're looking at just getting sweeped here in the actual games, it's not got to feel good for, for Oasis Revenant. I'm really looking for that knockout punch to be delivered here uh, for SBM. But I'm really hoping we get the Cinderella story and, and bring us all the way to, to that game five with uh, Oasis Revenant. Because I know they have the possibility. I know they have the strength. They have the, the members that can pull it off. But it's just 
they haven't shown up today. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, this was the team that knocked SB Mirage down into that loser's bracket. So they should have had some uh, pretty big confidence uh, walking into this uh, match. But other than that, any other final thoughts you have before we go into a break? Just uh, hoping to see a different Oasis come through the door next time around. I uh, really, really want to see that performance. And for SBM, they just got to keep on trucking, keep doing what they're doing, and they'll be just fine. So we'll see on the other side of this break who comes away with a victory in this game. Is it the final game of the series or do we get to go the length and the distance? We'll have to see. Check back in in just a few moments.
Welcome back for this potential last game of the finals here in the Risen Divine League. We have SBM versus Oasis Revenant with SBM up 2-1 to one now. We have a swap up of sides again for this game. Oasis on the blue side, SBM on the red side. We already are getting into the bands and the thick of it here, Daniel Sun, as these teams are ready to do battle once again. We have the Gragas uh, taking off the blue side, so we potentially don't get the Gragas Yasuo combo that SBM are so known for. But Caitlyn is the ban away from the red side, as well as that Azir. The Graves was also taken away in pair with that Gragas. Is it going to be the Akali, Graves, and Gragas ban three games in a row? We will find out yep. on this third ban, but like. I mean, clearly you're not banning everything you should, OR. Like, but let's let's maybe give them something and try to counter it a little bit. But they're hovering this last one, so no, nope, not a lot of thought went into <laughs> this one. I guess. Yeah, thought wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and uh, Caitlyn and Zia, I believe they've also been banned uh, these two games. It was the Lucian game two, and then uh, the Volley Bear game three. Yep, the Volley Bear because they did not have the first pick to grab that. Ooh, hold up. LS is speaking in their ear right here, saying, if you're uh, having trouble, Mother Mary said to me, speak So you take away the one bear, they throw in another pick one. Pick any. Yeah. Man, you're interrupting my song over here. Come on. I know. I'm so sorry. Whatever. Just... Oh, now would be the pretty The spice is up. nice. So, okay. <laughs> we just got ran around on, like, a gigantic carousel around the, the picks of League of Legends, and then it's just going to be this ash that gets picked up so i see oh, i yeah. see you oasis i see you i All mean right? still one of probably the strongest 80 carries in the meta right now caitlin was banned leaving ash the other one open very comfortable uh first pick right there but can be played around you know you could pick up something like the karma or like another strong 80 carry there in the bot lane in the vars cool. now he has cool. seen a lot of nurse recently but he is seeing a little bit of a resurgence with an Essence Reaver build, I guess they're really going for that ultimate CDR, you know, getting a lot of easy, free engages. Definitely a lot easier to hit than the Ash Arrows, I think. Uh, would you agree? Yes. Also, uh, Nox Show, really good at Varus. Also, Varus, really good into Ash. At least I think so. Um, especially with the damage that comes out from the Varus, you can match that poke and put even more back onto her. So uh, that gets me really excited for uh, SBM, as well as the next pick, which is one of my personal favorites, as oh, the yeah. Hecarim gets locked in for SBM. And I, Mowgli, I know you're listening here, and I'm getting really excited. We were talking about it before, and uh, Daniel said you too. If they finally pull out the Oswa, I'd be so excited. Till, Still City Warrior is an absolute menace on that champion. It hasn't been banned away. They haven't picked it up. It has been a huge pick for them here recently in their rise to the finals. And Hecarim does have a knockup, so there's possibility. He's also just a really good champion right now. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Oasis picking up the Kindred and the Mordekaiser. I am just going to throw it out there. I hate the Kindred pick. The fact that you have to go against the Hecarim, he does have a knockback. He does have his ultimate that has the fear, and you're just in this tiny little circle, and it gets really scary. And so mm -hmm. that's why I personally don't like it. I don't know about you. Uh, but I do really have to appreciate that Mordecai. It's going to be huge in the team fights and huge for their team. I do agree. So far, they're drafting a lot of engage uh, on the side of SBM. You know, uh, Jax is an interesting pickup. It's a classic counter over here to the Mordecai. Where, you know, you can win lane fairly easily with that kind of a pick. And in the death realm, I believe, you just wait to pop your ultimate. And you should be able to 1v1 him uh, after two items with that. So I really do like the Jax pickup over here uh, from SBM. But yeah. Not too sure about the Kindred pick, especially in to all this engage. Usually you want something like a Gragas to disengage or something like an Azir there in the mid lane uh, to sort of counter that a little bit. Kindred, very weak into someone in there like Hecarim who has a lot of displacement and, to first eventually shove her out of the ultimate. Very weird stuff. And, and Jax. Like Jax's Counter-Strike is a huge portion of that circle. And, oh, oh man, things are just looking real rough for always. I'm not going to put, I'm not going to paint it yet that SBM have won. They are, they're, they're definitely smurfing in draft for sure. Uh, <laughs> we are getting through the bands in the second phase as the Cassidy and Vigar, again, same bands we've seen from SBM on the red side. They come out in the second phase. This time though, the Morgana band away as well as we're waiting on that last one. It's just going to be another second here what they decide they want to do. Uh -oh. And they're going to miss it actually. I'm sure we'll get the update here in a second. It Silas. is Silas. 
Ooh, yeah, he did look very good in the top lane there. There it uh, is. I love I knew I, in the back of my head, Daniel son, I knew this was coming. It was banned away. It put the thought in their head potentially, but then they pick up the Varus and you're like, hmm, what can you go with the Varus? What's going to be good here? Blitzcrank right now for Havoc can be this pop off champion. Their composition, I hate to sound like I'm leaning that way, but man, they are just getting everything that they could ever ask for in this draft. And really up to Oasis with these last two picks to show me what's up. And they do with the first pick, the classic combination, the classic deadly combination of the Zyra and the Ash. Oh yeah, definitely a lot of all-in potential and poke uh, from these two champions. Now, I'm not entirely sure if Zyra is exactly what you need there against the Blitzcrank. I think that actually Shaco support is emerging as a counterpick to that. You know, you can't really get hooked uh, if there's a box right in front of you right there. A lot of AP. But, Oof. Ooh, yeah, so much magic damage actually coming out of here. They do have the Kindred and the Ash, but Mordekaiser is really their only front line uh, for all that back lane right there. I actually really would like the Echo pick up there. Or oh, at least someone who could just yeah, no. someone who could just melt these guys. Rumble would actually be very, very good. A lot of good positioning tools with his ultimate. And we it would be a here. rumble into the Oriana in mid lane, so that would be a really interesting matchup there as well. And the other thing you gotta factor into all this is the play that we've seen so far in, in this series, and it's yes, been heavily favored towards Soulbound Mirage, and you've had great games from multiple members on that team, maybe if not all of them. Um but this game in particular, I feel like it's just going to carry a lot of that momentum that we've seen, and that's really worrisome. I think, though, I'm, I'm getting the little thought in the back of my head, and sometimes, you know, my intuition is right, that Oasis are going to come back re-energized, revitalized, and come in just swinging off the bat with this composition that they've drafted for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they have all the tools that they can potentially use to uh, turn this series around on the side uh, of Oasis or even potentially finish this one off uh, from SPM. I mean, you know, ultimately look at this one. I do think they have very good early games from every champion here on this map. They have Hecarim. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the early get early levels go uh, in the Hecarim Kindred matchup. I'd imagine if Hecarim goes Phase Rush, it's probably going to be more towards his side. But if he goes Conqueror, I think Kindred's going to win that one. So in terms of prior there, I think that they have a lot more on the side of SPM. But in terms of scaling, I actually do think that uh, OR has a little bit of an advantage right there. Yeah, they don't have the Jax, which is actually going to be massive for SPM. But the Orianna definitely outscales the Rumble. Ash is going to be way better than Varus late game. And Kindred has the potential to scale infinitely uh, in the jungle right there. Whether or not they're actually going to be more relevant I... in a team fight has yet to be seen, though. Kindred's looking a little bit rough into that Hecarim Jax matchup, like you said. I want to circle back to something you said because maybe I differ a little bit there. I think that this Varus is going to have a field day. I mean, as you had pointed out Ooh. earlier, Hubris, just the only real front line on the side of Oasis Revenant. And you're if, if it's the lethality Varus, which I'm guessing it's going to be, you just have so much poke and so much damage to put down that... It gets really rough, and Zyra doesn't have a heal. <laughs> She's looking for kills. They're looking at a kill lane down there. You're trying to get the root into the combination with Ash and get the damage down. But against this bot lane, it's going to be a little bit rough. Yes, you can catch out the Varus. Yes, he is very squishy. But if you just happen to not put a seed down right, you don't get a plant out, and that hook comes running, and you are not in a uh, position to dodge it, you're gonna be in a, lot, a world of hurt. And if they start getting ahead, those arrows are gonna be doing half health, if not more. Yeah, I completely agree. Varus did see a lot of nerfs on his arrows though, so. He did, he did. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what build he's gonna go right here. If he does go for that essence might Reaver, be I do think tempo. that. Oh, lethal tempo with the attack speed, you think? It might be, it might be. It might be. I mean, like, usually you go that kind of a build into a team with a lot of tanks on it. You know, Varus has a lot That's of what I percent thinking, max though. health damage. So if he does go this new reemergence essence reaver build, I do think that's the most optimal. Like I said, I don't think uh, Armor Pen is very good at all on this champion anymore. Though, you know, he could pop up, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, either way, I think that overall, in third game of the series, I think the advantage is going over the side of SBM. What do you think, my man? 
just from the draft, I have to say yes. I have hope, though. I have hope that Oasis are going to show up. The red carpet is going to unfurl, and they are just going to hard smurf this game because we've seen Slayer's performance. He is online. He is feeling good. He is moving superbly in the fight. Oh, yeah. And it's just the fact that nobody around him is able to withstand any sort of fight. He just doesn't have the time to do what he does. And if you can set yourself up well in this one, if you don't get behind early against this composition, against this team who is looking for that one item power spike, who's looking for that early kill, that snowball potential, you have a chance. And I want to see that come through for Oasis. Because I know they have what it takes. I know they can perform to this level, but it just hasn't been so today. Yeah, absolutely. They have been looking very, very rough these first two games. We are not seeing the same Oasis as we saw in that series earlier. But I do think they have a lot to work with here in this uh, final game draft. They certainly have a lot of good picks and a lot of creative ways uh, to approach this game. But yeah, overall, I think that SBM does have the advantage here, and I'm looking for a clean sweep over here by SBM. You thinking <laughs> the same? We will have to see, my man. We will have to see, but we are going to hit that spectator delay just to get through uh, a little bit of a break. We're going to dissect this draft, and we'll be right back at you with this awesome game that we have in front of us. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are on to Summoner's Rift here with Oasis Revenant versus Soulbound Mirage. Yeah, definitely. We are looking at a very, very exciting uh, game three right here. Like we said, we have a lot of early power to be working with from both these teams and a few very interesting picks. Unfortunately, no Yasuo. What we do have is a Blitzcrank and an early potential invade over oh, here. No. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Glacier Freeze, not even expecting it. The flash forward from Havoc and... If you're putting a stamp, he's got his name on it. Uh, you hate to see it over here from Glacier Freeze. He was probably one of their best players there uh, in those previous games on his Oriana. And starting out with that little bit of deficit and all that early gold going the way of that uh, Varus, he will be getting a uh, pair of boots to start himself off and an extra like pot. Or extra two pots, actually. 400 I really gold. like it. Do you really the, like it? Uh... To, the, to dodge the route early on. Because just in case, because that's the one thing that can happen here. That is the one thing that can happen in Nox Joe's. You get caught by a route, the combination damage from the Ash and the Zyra is too much and you die. That boot, Those boots give you a little bit more of a chance to dodge that. Counterpoint, uh, boots don't do any damage. So You're right. Why, why not You're take right. a long They sword? don't care. They have a Blitzcrank. They know they have the damage. This is squishy members. They want to go for making sure they don't feed. Because yeah, I, I do feel like this is their, the main win condition for Oasis Revenant is this bot side. Yeah, I completely agree. Meanwhile, both the junglers are actually going to be starting on the top half uh, of the map, starting the red buff and the blue buff, respectively. Uh, looks like we're going for a full clear on the side of uh, Kindred. Meanwhile... Oh, the hook. Ooh. They get a lot of damage. Look at that one shot from uh, from Nox Show. But damage from Slayer is pretty nice as well. Getting the slow down, being able to pop those extra shots in. Yeah, you know, that level one on Ash is uh, no joke. I believe it was Voidboy who said on Twitter recently that Ash is actually the strongest champion in the game, uh, level one, because <laughs> she gets a free frozen mallet uh, in her kit. Big fan Pretty of much. that item. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, on the top lane, I got to say, you have some windows that you can have used there on the uh, Mordekaiser before Jax just gets his insane scaling. I mean, the Q is obviously a very big tool you can use there in the game, but Jax, he's going to wait for you to waste your cooldowns going with his own Q and uh, try to... Kind of abuse that on the side. Mid lane, actually, too, is going to be a very interesting match. I believe oh, Rumble, he has very strong all ins, but you don't want to take too much damage from the poke there, which Orion is absolutely insane at dishing out. We got some interesting wave situations here, as we're going to see a press E boy get a nice little combination out there. I did want to say something. Um, I. <laughs> I feel yeah. bad because it's been me and you going back and forth, like trying to figure out how we want to name this. I think we're just going to say that we're on game four. And, uh, and we're just gonna we're just gonna do away with it. We're game yeah. four. There was a free game, game one. We didn't get to watch that. It just happened in in the clouds above. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're on game four. And this is backs up against the wall for Oasis Revenant. And early game is not going good for them. They still have a lot of possibilities here. But the playmaking ability from the side of Soulbound Mirage has been just so so good. And we're talking about it right now. Uh -oh. Freeze the site. Here is very sore in the mid lane. Steel City Warrior picking up a kill for himself finally. And 0-2 uh, for Glacial Freeze. Not great to start off. Yeah, Hecarim with the Ghost and the Phase Rush is no joke, man. So much extra move speed and in turn AD. You get out with those items. Meanwhile, Kindred making her way into the bottom half of the map, but she does not see the mark on that top scuttle. Really unfortunate with her pathing right there, but she is looking for something. It could potentially get something with this freeze right here, but none of that, no hard CC. Far. Yeah, they're, they're pushed too far in. They're going to try and stay for a little bit, but it is a Blitzcrank. It is a Varus. It's going to be really rough. Maybe they overextend, but it's a lot of time here spent for scouting ground. Let's see if it's worth it. As There comes the root. It did land on Havoc to jump in, but not enough to get anything. Yeah, really unfortunate. You know, on Kindred... It's really great if you can get something happening early and give yourself uh, some extra souls right there. Who is she marked, actually? I believe she still has the Hecra mark, even though he's uh, making his way in the jungle. Maybe on the top really? lane, it might be a solo kill happening. Ooh, very no. low. It's a little early for it, for sure. Uh, once that level 6 comes around, yes. <laughs> mm. I have no doubt. Ganogan was looking mid, just trying to look to get something going. Meanwhile, losing his side of the jungle, the best turtle, who's just been farming away at the Gromp there. Yeah, you know, getting a farm is uh, very, very good, especially when you can get your uh, enemy uh, jungler's uh, farm for yourself. And I believe Kindred's going to be walking into her own jungle. She sees that scrying orb. She already knows. She knows what's up. She said, ah, oh, my wolves are gone. Ah, oh, my scrying orb's gone. And ah, uh, 
My Gromp is also gone. No Froggy for this wolf uh, in this jungle. That is a unfortunate point, but we have an Ocean Dragon on the Rift here. Daniel Sun for this, uh, mm. this game number four. It is going to be the first dragon of the game. Been on the Rift for a little bit now. Not long, not long, but uh, with the pace that we've seen already in this series, you expect there to be a big focus towards it. I'm sure it's going to be that level six yet again, like we saw in last game where all the fireworks started blowing up everywhere. Oh, um, yeah. But again, this game is looking just like that. Yeah, you know, Rumble, uh, he actually has very, very good roams considering how good his uh, laning is on that champion. You know, you basically have to walk just slightly past the Dragon Pit to a position your old on top of uh, the enemy bot lane. And with champions like Ash and Zyra, they don't really have any dashes to get off that do yeah. immediately. So really good pickup from them, particularly if you can land any kind of CC or slows from the Blitzcrank or Varus. Really great stuff. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Kindred has still not gone for her first back, and Ekram gotten himself a Sheen, probably one of the best first items for that champion. Really does a lot to speed up his clear. And yeah, I'm not just going to go for the dragon. Or yeah, if they can get that early anymore. dragon, that'd be really good. It's going to be really nice for them. Death Realm uh, going to be available here. It is going to be Pop, so Press e Boy getting in some trouble here. He has a lot of damage now. He has hit level 6 as well. He's got some there, but the healing coming through. Press e Boy is actually potentially going down Whoa. here. He does. Hubris picking up a kill on the top side for himself, going up 1-0 against the Jax. Yeah, getting that early Bramble to counteract both the Vamp Scepter, the D-Blade, and the Conqueror on the Jax is just what you need to uh, abuse that little window you get around level 6. I mean, that early Jax level 6 provides a lot in the way of your auto attacks, but auto attacks don't do a lot uh, when they have a Bramble Vest and, you know, all of your stats have been taken. I believe he played that right, where he used his own ultimate after Mordekaiser used his ultimate to yeah. steal the stats away. So really good job on the Jax from them, but... You know, maybe look for uh, the one item power spec before you go for any more fights, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is going to be really nice for the Jax later on, though, as you get those items packing, as you get that kind of scaling going for that champion, it's going to feel really good. And meanwhile, you do see a focus towards this dragon, potentially for best turtle, who has gained a bit of momentum himself in this game, but not quite ready to commit to the big objective just yet. Yeah, we do have Hecarim. Maybe it looks like he's going for something there, but other than that, he's just taking the entire jungle uh, of the way of this Kindred. Oof, big stuff top lane. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of damage down, but the shield is going to come out and help a decent amount, get a good trade back on to oppress the boy there. Meanwhile, we see a scuffle potentially unfolding here around the dragon. You do have Kindred going towards her side of the jungle, but can't really because red buff is being taken by Best Turtle. Oh, yeah, that would hate to get that early red buff up to that Hecarim. It doesn't look like we see any kind of contestion from the bot lane uh, of OS, but I mean, top lane too. Just fight after fight after fight with these guys. Insane stuff. Yeah, it's going to be like this more than likely for the rest of the game as uh, those two are going to be tussling over and over again. Finally, we get some pings onto the dragon. And we get it started up here. It's going to be a 3v3 with both junglers intact. Now Rumble heading down to give the numbers advantage. Does have the movement first. As Orianna still farming the dragon, getting very low. Who's going to get it? It uh -huh. is secured by Best Turtle, who flashes the Lucian emote yet again. Yeah, a little uh, unclean there in that smile. I do think there is the potential for a Kindred Steel if she was <laughs> yeah. a little bit quicker. But, you know, uh, hindsight is 20-20. I guess they really didn't have too much vision there in that pit. Either way, we do have level sixes available all across the map, even some level eights in the mid and top lane. Except for the Zyra, actually. She still is not level six. So maybe this is their opportunity right here to abuse these uh, ADC ultimates on whoever thinks they're a little bit stronger right now. Uh, Berserker Greaves or is it Berserker Greaves and two long swords? I think that might be the way. Of Ooh. Ooh, flash into the prolonged ulti, but here comes the engagement. That's the chains right down, but immediately Nox Joe falls and Slayer is turning it on here. He flashes forward, but doesn't get the distance that he wanted. Gets a couple more shots on Havoc, but at least is able to pick up a kill. They do trade one for one, but that aggression is what you're looking for in game number four. Yeah, what you're not looking for was that Varus flash right there. <laughs> you yeah. know, if you're 
Yeah, you get taught this sometimes as a kid. It's like uh, if you're on, if you're playing on some train tracks, you know, do you run and you see a train coming? Do you run across the train tracks or you just step to the side a little bit? You know, if you've ever seen the movie Prometheus, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah I got you. <laughs> you know, little, just a little unclean. Great movie. He actually way. died with a uh, heal available right there, so definitely a little bit unclean. Maybe could have lived, gotten a little damage on Ash from changing the chariot. That a two for one. I don't think it would have made the difference between him living and dying, but. Either way, yeah, Prometheus was a good movie. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> after what's all even that, is, yeah, the analysis <laughs> out the side. Prometheus, great movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that was I a love good it. Right there. Either way, yeah, we do have some objectives spawning on the map right here. They did get that first Ocean Drake on the side of a SBM, but Rift Herald, actually, the first Rift Herald of the game would be very huge for any team who gets it. Get a lot of gold uh, into the pockets of some of these members. Meanwhile, let's look at some of these buys. Jax is actually definitely going for the Blade of the Rune King. Gets the Cutlass, Devil Dagger, and ooh, very safe build over here for Mordekaiser. Going for Bramble Vest into the Ninja Tabbies into what's probably going to be a Haunting, guys, if I had to guess. A very efficient item on that champion. Definitely gives you a lot of damage. And ooh, the item build over here from the Rumble. Now, ooh, hold up, hold up. Botline, botline, botline. Yeah, they are going to get the root onto Nox Joe, and he's just going to fall. That's a big kill going over. Now, Scouting Ground has gotten a single stack now. Um, hasn't been the most proactive on trying to get those stacks early on. It is already 12 minutes in with only one stack. Although that changes really quickly, but that four stack spike is so pivotal to her. And once you start getting around these objectives, these big fights, you're really gonna need that extra leg up, if you will. I completely agree. Speaking of a leg up, we're seeing something happen in the top lane here. Big trade happening from both Mordekaiser and Jax. But he's saying, I don't want none of this. I'm waiting until I get my Blade of the Rune King. And at times like this, when we see Varus taking both of those uh, arrows right there, you have to wonder, why did he choose to go heal instead of cleanse in this wave? You know, Ash decided to go for yeah. the cleanse. Uh, you know, but they have two people who could potentially uh, CC you into oh. a fight right there. Oh, a lot of damage out there in the top lane. Yeah, it's a, a lot returned onto the Jacks for no real compensation um, for himself. So, big advantage there for Hubris as potentially looking for a Rift Herald play here are the junglers. They are just going to be farming up their top sides of the jungle, but Rift Herald is available. And you start seeing pings coming down from SBM. And Best Turtle does have a, a crucial point right now. He has finished the Trinity Force, and it is Ooh. only 13 in this game. He has 30 far more than Scouting Ground and is just running the pace of this game straight up the mountain. And now Hubris is... Actually, he doesn't go for it. So I was going to say he's going to be the, the focus of the ire for Best Turtle, but he's going to be using the Trinity Force soon, and he decides to use it on the Rift Arrow. Yeah, you know, I'm not entirely sure if uh, ganking top lane was the play right there. I think that Mordecai is in a position where he could yeah, yeah. easily 1v1 whoever decides to ult. So going for the Rift Herald is a very uh, smart pickup right there. But that dragon is spawning very soon, and Rift Herald does take a while to. So uh, with Ash and the Zyra right there, I think Kindred should be paying for them to uh, start up on that second dragon right there. And which dragon would that be? Ooh, it would be the Cloud. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so Cloud would be very, very good with the champions they have. Very high cooldowns on the Ash, Zyra, Orianna. Basically all their ultimates, Kindred and Mordekaiser. Having lower cooldowns yeah. is very impactful on I those do, champions. I do want to highlight, we have gotten a lane swap where the bot lane for SBM has gone mid, and we do see the engage of Best Turtle on top lane. He still almost takes it. He doesn't even care that they're fighting so long. Oh, Ooh. the nice death row with the obliterate. Gonna end the hopes of Best Turtle in that fight. And that was a big overstep from the horseman himself. Now the dragon goes down to scouting ground. They get a lot for that. Tie up the dragons, get a kill for Hubris, and are just really feeling comfortable finally in this game for. Yeah, I gotta say, thank God, because Hubris has not looked very good this series, but he is turning it around in this one. Actually, smurfing on it, he pressed E-Boy a little bit. He's getting his kills, he's getting his items in. He might not have the scaling, but for now, he's looking very good. Ash Arrow, where is that going? Is it going top? It was. Um, not going to connect, though. Oh. Maybe it was a misclick. I'm not entirely sure. But sometimes you can go for plays like that, just like using your arrow top. She doesn't really have the build for it. Usually you go something like the Essence Reaver or Triforce or something if you really want to just start spamming those arrows, looking for those engages, which Ash is very good at. But she will not be doing that this game she has that blade of the rune king which would be very good against all that health that 
Yeah, they're actually not building too much health on the side of uh, SSB. I'm not entirely sure if Blade of the Rune King was the pickup here for these champions. However, three champions did just complete it in the last two minutes. Jax, Ash, and Varus all have four in I their build. I was just about to say, it's so funny. You saw all of them come up at like the same time, too. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Meanwhile, ooh, trade happening here. A press D-Boy is definitely on the wrong end of this matchup right now, but you're going to see Jack start turning on, and this could be the moment. He flashes away. That Obliterate would have done so much damage to Press D-Boy, but it gets away from it. Still City Warrior has arrived, though. Here comes the damage. He's getting dropped, Ooh. and that's a huge shutdown going into Rumble's pocket. That was a beautiful TP and a wonderful equalizer. Now that is exactly what you need to see right there from that rumble. He's doing a great job in the mid lane and getting something like that to really shut down the Mordkaiser, which really was the shining light on the side of a uh, Oasis. Oh no, they're going to go for the kill early though. There comes the onslaught though. Best turtle getting a lot of damage on Slayer, but not enough to take him. Scouting ground, the next one to be targeted here. Nox Joe might be in some trouble. He does use that Blade of the Rune King active. Oh. oh, that was such a close arrow. Flash forward, the root. Not going to connect onto Nox Joe. Now Havoc trying to go in for the fight. He doesn't get the hook. He's left out to dry. He's going down. The big shockwave. That's the turnaround. Glacier freeze after all series long. Not landing anything. Not being a big part. Trying his best to carry. He gets the huge shockwave to turn around the fight. And the gold lead has completely swung in the favor of Oasis Revenant. This is what we're talking about, Daniel Sun. Glacier Freeze coming in absolutely huge that fight. And I gotta say, after looking so bad uh, this series, not Glacier Freeze, but all of Oasis Revenant, we're like, this is the turn kind of turnarounds we need if they really want to swing this one back. They do have that free win from game one because they were in the winner's brackets, though. So if they win this one and just manage to get a little bit of tilt on the SB Mirage, then they could potentially win themselves this final right here. Could be absolutely huge. Starting the comeback here, and you gotta love to see it. The uh, the gears are turning, and they have come back to life after being just completely out of the last two games. They're actually showing up in this game, and it, it feels great. I I gotta wonder what the comms are like, what the in between was, what the who. I already posted it again. I, I love Julia asking it, but uh, I I just gotta ask who gave the speech, man, because I I love it. I love it. Um. Meanwhile, we did see the Rift Herald used. It is going to be going towards mid lane. They have a good defense here, but a lot of members cycling this way. Uh oh, big oh, nice there. arrow though. Best turtle gets grabbed. That's going to be a big rocket grab though. He gets the damage. Paralysis disappears off the map. Yeah, Steel City Warrior, a little bit of position there. However, there is not the punish available. They did get the proc with the Rift Herald in that mid lane tower, but I don't think they have the. Uh, Siege right now to actually get that. Varus does a lot of damage, but he is not that strong right now. A lot of wave clear. Oh, but they might be actually going for the dragon, which is available right now. This is Scouting the third ground. dragon. A That's third the counter strike to damage down. Is he going to use the respite? Doesn't have it actually. I'm sorry, I didn't even look. A press e boy taking that kill, and that was huge on the catch out because dragon coming up in 40 seconds. Now best turtle looking to gank mid. That's the hex flash. Is he going to go for it? The onslaught, the damage, shut down to Havoc, and I was, I had so much hope. We might have cast a Curse of Daniel uh. Sun. Um, everything's starting to turn around, though. Gold lead back in the favor of SBM, and they're trying to reinstall themselves in the driver's seat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they still have that Mordecai that they could potentially work with, but they won't have this uh, Infernal Drake uh, to be working with. 100% this is going the way of SBM. Kindred did just come up. Ooh, really good Bruce. denier there. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get it, though. The hop over the wall. Might still be in some trouble, though. Paralysis. Looking for it. A press C boy. Getting a nice dodge there. All right, Counter-Strike. He goes into the Death Realm. Going to buy some time, but he's all by himself here. Look at this damage coming down. Finally, Oof. Hubris going to secure that one. Dragon, meanwhile, was started up and secured by Best Turtle. So they're going to go up 2-1 to one in the Dragon score. And yet again, Script, I love you so much. We have an Infernal Soul. Oh, yeah. Three Infernal Souls in a row this year is not something you see every day, but it does get the game a lot more exciting. You know, I like big oh, numbers. No, and Slayer. I like you should not have stepped up to Hecarim. That might not have been a good idea, but he's still got the kite. He has pulled out a fight like this before. He oh. does not this time, though. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, I believe that Ash was level 9 or 10, and Hecarim's level 12. He is farming very well this series, and 
you know, he does have that red smite. He does have that Triforce. Those are some pretty big power spikes uh, for that champion. So, although you do get the slow, which does kind of counter Hecarim a little bit, that is just not what you need uh, right there to win that matchup. Either way, things are looking very, very good right now. If you are SB Mirage, these guys looking absolutely insane this game. Two dragons to one. Uh, they they are not uh, full towers, actually. They end up giving up that bot tower. I believe first one in the game. Actually, very unheard of considering last game they didn't give up a single one. Either way, they did just get the last outer turret uh, from Oasis Revenant. Really big stuff. Just showing you where the priority so far is uh, in this game. Who's really working with the power, you know? And that's the biggest point for this this game right now is it's such on a nice edge. It's been going back and forth in the gold lead. The first real time we've had this happen in this series so far, and it's it's chaotic there's a lot of back and forth but this is where you want to be to an extent <laughs> at least the bar is set a little bit low for uh for oasis so you're happy to be in a game that's this close and you're able to make these decisions you see the plays coming through it hasn't some of it's a little bit disjointed you're not seeing it all come together all that much but the parts that are are looking really really nice in this in this game four and i am really really wanting to hear that silver scrape so they're they've they've got themselves set up correctly they just need to start executing around those objectives and not get caught by havoc's rocket grabs yeah absolutely rocket grab could be absolutely insane for any team really in this series but you know what we haven't seen a lot of so far in the series is this kindred she made a few plays earlier she did just get 1v1 in there by that Jax, but i really would like to see her pop off a little bit more right here she does have a lot of potential on that champion I believe, how many souls is she at right now? Let me check. Three. So one more soul could be absolutely insane for that champion. She has the Hecarim March, but what she doesn't have, ooh, is a rocket grab hitting her. Really great job. That's a nice turnaround. Havoc getting dropped. He goes down. Best Turtle was trying to get the turnaround paralysis. He does get out with his health, though. Hubris and the Enchanted Crystal are going to miss. The Shockwave as well. These are whiffs. These are so big in the terms of not being able to have those ultimates available to you still city warrior getting caught though he's going to be forced to use the equalizer the lamps or spike came out early as that's a bit of a wasted cooldown there in terms of uh something in siege but best turtle has got oh, flank flank. Flank. they've been surrounded paralysis going to be the judge here he goes down best turtle going to pick up that one they're going to circle around still city warrior has returned he has tp this could be Glacier Freeze getting caught as the Counter-Strike comes down. The damage there. Glacier Freeze really low. One more arrow doesn't do it. The oh, burn, the ticking. He goes uh, down. Steel City Warrior cleaning that one up. It was the Leandries, not the red buff. Uh, my oh, mistake. So but tired. they I'm are so picking for the Baron right now. Yeah, not having a mid laner or a support is absolutely huge. So there's some very big ultimates. They would not have to potentially fight this in Hecarim. And the Varus and the Jax are all going to do this extremely quickly. This yeah, is a major power gone. swing. That's uh, Baron already at half health here. They're running, they're gunning, they're trying to get here, but they're not going to be able to respond. They might be able to take a fight afterwards, but I don't even know if you want to take that. Best Turtle, no mana. The back's coming through, and that is the Baron-empowered recall coming through. Absolutely. Absolutely huge swing going over the way uh, of SP Mirage. They do have another Dragon coming up here in about 45 seconds, bringing even more potential power uh, to these people. Meanwhile, speaking of power, we do have the Rage Blade actually finished up there on the Varus. This is going to be a major power spike uh, for that champion, but they do have the Rift Tail actually coming up right here. What will they be doing with it? Trying to get this tower? That's it the could, only time yeah. will tell. I don't think they're actually going to get it. It's trying to hit the oh, minion. No! Oh, no! so close! Just out of range. Unfortunately, Baron, we, yeah, when Baron you do use... minions better than, uh, than, than Shelly, I guess. Yeah, you have to get very close to the tower. I believe within the tower shot range, and it was just outside of that. Ooh, big Orion ultimate. Yeah, that was a big shockwave in response to that equalizer, but the damage in the background is too much. Paralysis is the first to fall. Lambs are spite used as Glacier Free is going to run away. Use that distance. The popover for Best Turtle. The ultimate big brain play. He's going to pick up two more potentially. Havoc going for the response Ooh. here, but it's actually Best Turtle getting worn down. Glacier Freeze looking for his own. He gets one double kill for Steel City Warrior, though. Oppressed E-Boy being oppressed as usual, but Hubris goes down for it as Best Turtle goes on a killing spree. And only one member left. It's Slayer to the three of SBM, and they come away with a fight.
Absolutely. And Hecarim is going to regen off those Raptors a little bit and turn around and look for putting in team at that soul point. Kindred is not up for another 10 seconds. And although there is no smite available on that Hecarim, I don't think we're going to see any kind of contestion from that Ash or Zyra. Mid lane tower also going down. Just getting everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. These guys, they're running the map. They're running the game. You know, a great man once said, play the map and map the plays. I believe that man was uh, Michael Santana on the cutie pie, and they are doing exactly that uh, in terms of best turtle. He has just been in this Kindred's jungle constantly this game, taking all these camps. Yo. He's up 100 CS yeah, as a jungler. That is almost unheard of. He's he's almost there. He hasn't officially flame horizoned him yet, but yes, he's he's really, really close. And I, I got to point out a sad fact. It's 26 minutes in, and Scouting Ground still only has three marks. Uh, oh, that geez. is a huge feels bad. You have not hit that power spike. You don't have that extra damage and you've fallen this far behind. It's just it's so hard to play around that. And it's reminded me a lot of the Kane game where it just never got online. It didn't get online fast enough for it to really be effective. And we're getting to a point in the game where we were close. We were about a thousand gold either way going back and forth over and over again to now the lead has ballooned to 5,000 for the side of SPM. And they're looking to change that right now with a shutdown onto Oppressed E-Boy, or at least a kill onto Oppressed E-Boy. They oh. are going to have the damage here, and they have the follow-through. Oppressed E-Boy just kind of running for his life here, but might be oh. in some trouble. Scouting Ground finally gets that one and is able to secure it. That at least gets them something, but the gold lead is still there no matter what. Yeah, and I think they're going to get this top tower up because of it. A little bit of a misplay there by Jax. He usually has his uh, wards available, but he's a little bit late uh, on these. Meanwhile, yeah, just no real contestant for any of these objectives. They don't have the Baron buff anymore, but what they do have is just an insane amount of gold, despite the kill uh, thing actually being very, very close. Kill thing. Uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the but kill thing. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Words, uh, let's talk about words. builds right now, though. Uh, we do look like we're going for the Death Dance right there on the Hecarim. That's going to make him very tanky and is a very good item for him. Indeed. Meanwhile, Rumble, it looks like he... Is he going for a... Uh... Oh, wait. wait, hold up. Kindred. Why? Did we just see a Kindred uh, ultimate come out? Uh, yes. Fat Finger, I Hopefully. guess. Hopefully. It's got to be. There's no... It's got to be. Anyways, I mean, let's move forward. Yeah, I don't think they saw it on the side of uh, SBM, so they probably can't have used that cooldown or anything. But yeah, Death Dance finished up. Weird pickup, though, on the uh, death cap for that Steel City Warrior in the Rumble. Usually you don't really have that good of AP scalings on that champion. Something like a uh, Morello could actually provide a lot of value here against this team. Ooh, Hecarim sees something. Oh, Hubris getting a lot of initial damage down. He's getting very low. That's the death round pop. Death Turtle still taking the tower, though. He needs to be really careful. He's trying to get the turn. He took way too many shots. That's a huge shutdown. That's a lot of gold in Hubris's pocket. No, Nox, Joe, you... You flashed the wrong ability, but at least he has cleanse. Or no, I guess he has the Mikhail's. No, he doesn't. What? It, it, yeah. Anyways, he, uh, he gets stunned down. He does have the QSS, and the pressed E-boy finally came into the fight. The equalizer came down. That's a lot of damage down, but he's not even able to take it. Steel City Warrior is the true MVP of the fight. Now it's back to a traditional one v one of the top laners, and who comes up on top? It is Hubris who finally gets it. That is the ace coming through. And Oasis for Revenant, turn it all around. Oh yeah, it was a little bit of a rough fight from uh, many members uh, there in that game, but ultimately it will be the Mordekaiser versus the Jax, and we all know how that one has been turning out this game. We do have Baron spawning up here in about 30 seconds. So playing division game is gonna be very important for both these teams, as well as getting those minions off the uh, mid tower. That is getting fairly low, but I think it's gonna survive right here. Nothing, no, uh, so... What are you talking Fox about? Joe. That's two times. Okay, so Doc Joe flashed the hawk shot. Yeah. And I do this to people. I do this to people all the time in solo queue. It's the funniest thing. They're pushing the tower. You shoot a hawk shot at them. They think it's the, the enchanted crystal arrow and they try and dodge out and they lose some time. But at that time, he flashed and got baited so hard the enchanted crystal arrow followed exactly the same path that the hawk shot followed and it landed right on. So that's just a really feels bad. That's happened twice in the game so far. And those are not the plays you want to be seeing. Yes, we've hyped up SBM this whole time, but those are the game-changing plays that can win your enemy team the game. Yeah, I completely agree. We do have Infernal Drake spawning here in about 30 seconds. Again, playing the vision game is going to be so important for this objective. This is a potential third Infernal Soul uh, for SBM, which would be absolutely huge 
if they get it. But we may have the opportunity for a turnaround from OR if they do get a similarly good fight. Ash Arrow is available, as is the Hawk. Ooh. Oh, the chains miss. Not going to be able to get him. The slow, uh, the, the arrow is there, but the QSS available again. Nox Joe getting stunned up. Damage down. Big equalizer across. That's the it, Lambs of Spike coming down to buy some time. But look, it's the damage from Steel City Warrior, the team combination. And here comes Havoc there. on the backside, finally joining the fight. There goes the kill into Havoc's weight in pockets. The Crest Eve boy is going to be in the death round, but he's going to be safe from harm. Havoc. Being in some trouble here, Slayer going for the kite. He is just oh. going to pick up a free kill. Meanwhile, Steel City Warrior gets dragged in. He gets taken down after all of that. And these fights really going in favor of Oasis Revenant. And the Press Deep Boy, be really careful there. Yeah, guys, they're going to get this dragon turnaround too. So much pressure going the way of uh, SB Mirage. And I got to say, this one is looking like a top lane difference right now. Hubris is just coming out absolutely huge. And... Yeah, yeah. It's a big uh, comparison compared to how a big oppressed E Boy was on that game two with the Vladimir and uh, game three. Who did he play game three? It was the Silas. Yeah, absolutely huge there on both those picks. So maybe once he gets that third item, maybe the Wits End will be enough to finally 1v1 the Mordekaiser in his death realm. But he is very <laughs> uh, far behind here in what should be a Jack's favorite matchup. Very unlucky. I do want to report Kindred has reached four stats. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you'd love to see it. It's a it's a great time. It's a great time. So Vision Game is gonna be the name of the game right now. We are on Soul Point for SBM. Another dragon not up for four minutes as the last one was secured by the side of Oasis, and it's gonna be just a bit of a tussle around Vision around the Baron Pit here. I don't think either team's gonna be looking to start it unless they have the the go flags i guess around the map but they just want to make sure that the positioning is there if they can if they need to um so you see a lot happening around this best turtle clearing up the top wave gonna be roaming down so some problems could arise for oasis revenant who are trying their best to get some vision out themselves yeah definitely meanwhile we do have jacks there in the bottom half of the map Ooh. Just very good. Like, Jack's in the bottom half of the map, just providing a lot of pressure for his team. Does have the TP available, and I'm actually curious as to why Mordekaiser is not choosing uh, to match this. It seems like that's definitely the play right there if you're Mordekaiser. Definitely does. Maybe just wants to stay near the fight. But yeah, he does have the TP available. So you got to think he is going to respond finally there. Maybe just wanted to clean up some more CS in the mid lane for himself. But it's... It's going to be a stalemate here for a little bit. And it's crazy to think that we've gotten to a point in this game where it's like this because all we've seen in this series are stomps and this game finally bringing us what we thought we were going to have in all the games and i'm loving it so far now these moments where there's no no big action happening there's just like positioning and stuff like that yes it's a little slower i i still love it because you get to see how these teams work how their strategies work and where they they're the thoughts of them and how they want to play league of legends come through yeah, I completely agree. We're just seeing so much real macro play across this. And overall, I think it might be a little bit of a misplay from OR by going for this because you are giving that Jax time to scale. Yes, he is eventually yeah. going to be matched by this Mordekaiser, but eventually this man is just going to be an absolute terror here in the side lane. We're already seeing some of that. He is at three items right here, but maybe once he gets his uh, Death's Dance, I think is the next pickup for there for that champion, he will just be even scarier than he is right now. Really, really big stuff from this guy. Yeah, and still sitting in four stacks for scouting ground. Got to be looking for more. He has the rumble marked right now. Uh, so definitely looking for him in the fights. But you see positioning around the Baron. It started up. They have a lot of damage here with Nox Joe and a lot of uh, siege prevention from the Havoc. And they can use. We'll have to see how they want to do it, though. They have a lot of area damage here. They have the TP coming in. This is looking really rough. Best Turtle needs to get out of there. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to be QSS, though, immediately as it did connect on to Nox Joe. Now, how do they want to approach this fight? Is they just say, this is the go button for us. We want to start the Baron now. We want to force the fight. The Chains of Corruption go in. The grab, that's going to be the most tanky, the best member going in. And he's going to be able to use the Death Realm on Havoc and pick up a kill for himself. Big equalizer splitting the team. 
The counter strike going in. Lambs are spike gonna be perfectly timed to press E Boy gonna be in some serious trouble here. He gets knocked up, taken down the big shockwave in the back. Best turtle trying to carry the team. But look who's firing away. It's Knox Joe, but he's the last one in the fight as Best Turtle is running away. Does he and get out? Three members live here for Oasis Revenant, and they take the fight. Just a real turnaround in this game over here from Oasis Revenant. They really want this one. Probably a little bit of a misplay over here from the Blitzcrank pulling in that Mordekaiser and not having enough burst to really uh, hammer him down. He ends up getting just so much AoE damage on every member of the side uh, of SB Mirage that it almost becomes a winnable and they come away with another team fight win for the side of Oasis Revenant. Now Baron is still on the map. No one was able to take before him, but we also do have a seventh, or sorry, a sixth dragon on the map as well. I think the play right here is for a SBM to go for the dragon, a little bit more of a permanent buff to themselves than that Baron, and they're very quick to get on this. Kindred is nowhere close, and this is just about to spawn right here. This is looking bad for SB, for Oasis. They're, they're on their way. We are neck and neck. Gold dead even at 36 minutes into the game. We have a TP coming down. This could be the deciding fight. The Enchant Crystal Arrow, the Mordekaiser is in the fight, but it is secured by Best Turtle. They get yet another Infernal Dragon, and here comes the damage down. Hubris was trying to get in there, was not able to, as the Counter-Strike from Press e Boy is not going to hit anybody. He's by himself. Look at the health bar going down. Nox Joe is the next one. The team fight is broken up, and it is SBM who falls. Beautifully done by Hubris and Co. Yeah, with two members of the side of SBM Mirage, they will be turning their eyes on that Baron, and I think this should be very, very free from them. Yes, they do have the Hecarim, who is 130 CS up on that Kindred, two contests with it, three levels on him. But I think this should be fairly free for the side of Oasis Revenant. And Nox Show just getting caught out in that fight is just unfortunate. And that's that non-mobile ADC we were talking about. The Shockwave coming through. Best Turtle looking for the steal. He doesn't get it. He goes into the pit anyways. Looking for the damage down. Can't Ooh. get it. Big Shockwave available. Not available. Sorry. Just used. But the Equalizer did come down as well as the Lamb for Spite. So those are two big cooldowns. But there's not going to be another fight. Another big fight at least. Until those two come back up. Yeah, definitely. And with all these members down on the side of SBM, they are just hammering down Ooh. that base. Asher They're is going to help gonna them snowball do it. Yeah, they want to keep going here. Still City Warrior going to be in some trouble. That's going to be a big knock up there onto the members of SBM as Hubris is just way in there. Pressed E Boy trying to come online on the Jacks. He gets one kill, gets a shutdown for himself, but nothing else here. Hubris did get out alive. Knox Joe not being able to put down the poke damage that you'd be liking. And That's they are three members down. I think this is base. game. They need to be careful, though. You do have Havoc looking for the catch out. You do have that poke damage and the Infernal Soul with that. So you need to be really careful. Here goes Havoc. He's going in. He does. He get the silence. He doesn't get it. He goes down before it happens. And yes, you were right, Daniel Sun. They have come alive. Call him Frankenstein's monster because they have arrived. It is Oasis Revenant bringing back a game and tying us up two to two. Send us to Silver Scrapes. Woo! Oh my god, the absolute turnaround coming in from Oasis Revenant. SBM Slayer in particular coming in so huge here on that ass. Just landing clutch ultimate after clutch ultimate. Forces Nox Joe to actually go the QSS. Second and a half item. And no other QSSs are built. She's able to get such great engages. Hubris coming in absolutely insane here on that Mordekaiser picks. 11 and 2 against Jax, where I think Jax should have had the advantage. But overall, just a completely different game four over here from Oasis Revenant. Huge stuff. What a insane game number four. This is what it should have been all along. Daniel, son, I am so happy that we have arrived and we are going to game number five. We're going to get a little break in while we get ready for the action. Don't touch that browser. You're not going to want to miss it as we come back in just a few moments.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the final game of this Divine League Grand Finals. We have made it all the way to game five. You have heard the silver scrapes, and we are getting right into picks and bands. It is Lemons, it is Daniel Sun, and we are ready for the action. We have Gragas taken off the board for Oasis Revenant, who are on the blue side this time around. Gragas, that first band, the Graves, the second band, SPM on the red side this time. Azir and Mordekaiser taken taking away. Alrighty, some kind of unique bands coming through, except for Gragas, Grace, and Akala, the exact same bands every single time, all five games of the series. Well, I don't know if you want to consider it four or five from uh, OR, it's just insane stuff. But Azir, Mordekaiser, and Volibear, pretty predictable. They are leaving the Caitlyn open, though, very surprisingly. Whether or not they actually choose to first pick it on the side of OR has yet to be seen. I mean, they banned it every game in the series. Might as well try to see what it looks like now. You know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if there's a if, there, if there's a time to change it up, it's in game five. Uh, oh yeah. As we think, as we speak, Caitlyn first pick up for Ori uh, for Oasis. Sorry, uh, not Oriana. Um, Ash, the hover here for SBM could be the potential pick. I would like to see it for SBM. I think it sets them up nicely for those engages that maybe have been a little bit lacking. I think last game, they did wonderfully with their comp. They had the Hecarim engage, they had all that stuff, but it just, <sighs> hubris. <laughs> he carried so hard last game. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Slayer was doing his own work and he was doing just fine, but man, hubris, 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 hubris. Hopefully he doesn't get too much of a hubris this game and continues the steady play. But the Karma Ash was the double lock in there for SBM. Yeah, and I think the pickup right here is to go for Honestly, the Blitzcrank in the bot lane for OR. These are two range champions, a lot of poke. Oh no, Morgana will lose you the game. Don't go for the Morgana, dude. This is a bad matchup for Morgana, man. No, there's too much poke. Morgana can't deal with this. This this pick will lose you the game. Oh. Well, uh, looks like game five is going the way of SPM. But uh, yeah, that's a really bad pickup, actually. Morgana, she loses to basically every single enchanter in the game. Karma being probably one of the best ones right now and Ash. We're kind of very, very weak to poke, and yeah, that's a lot of poke versus champion who's very weak to poke. I mean, Caitlyn Morgana is a very strong lane, but this is not the lane to be playing it into. I don't necessarily yeah, agree with the Kindred as well. It's it's really rough, honestly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kindred, uh, yes, had a performance last game. <laughs> there was a Kindred in the game. I, it 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 worked oh, yeah. out better than we thought for sure. I was going to make a whole thing. I was going to make a whole spiel. Then SBM just had to completely derail my thoughts and lock in that Lee Sin Daniel son. I love it. There I it love is. to see it. Game five, you pull out a carry champion here for best turtle who has been doing so, so well. He had pop offs on Hecarim last game, but it wasn't enough. This game, he's looking to go all or nothing here. We are already getting into the second phase of bands, but man, that is a wonderful pick for game five. Cassidy again, banned out for SBM, been the same every single game that they've had. The Vigar, obviously the next ban. Rumble actually taken away for Oasis this time around, though. Yeah, really, really bad bands over here coming through. I really do like the Lee Sin into the Kindred, a classic counter pick right here. But yeah, Cassidy and Vigar always ban away from that mid laner. I'm not entirely sure if that entirely fits uh, OR's champ pool, but you know, maybe they're just scared of it. You know, either way, the Rumble did put in a lot of work. Uh, when he was in the game but other than that i think i'm really liking a lot of these bands that we're going to see we have to pick the top lane and the mid lane for both of these guys so we're going to get the counter pick for whichever lane sbm wants we have yet to see <laughs> the shen was banned away there from oasis as their last ban um and good good eye at least i mean it was uh them that played the shen but you know maybe not giving that option to sbm who could really utilize it well with the Lee Sin. I think that combination is just so strong. Uh, they do pick up this Silas, and that has been a bit of a, a strong point here for Ooh. SBM, who honestly, Silas did a really great job in game number two to, to, to carry. So seeing that lock in with the Lee Sin, with the ults that are available on the other side, they're setting themselves up pretty. Yeah, definitely. He came in very, very big. He did get a lot of pressure there uh, from his jungler in that lane, but they are going to go for the Ziggs mid, it looks like. A very good blind pick can easily be counterpicked, specifically by a Yasuo. 
Yeah. And I think if you're going to pick Gimbalo, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> they, they, just force it. they just force it. Why not? <laughs> like, I would love I to see it. I think this is actually a very good pickup for it, too. You know, he's pretty good into the Kindred, pretty good into the Caitlyn Morgana. But what will be the top lane pick? If it's a bad top lane pick, you can never pick it. And it's, yeah, that's a bad top lane pick. You don't want to pick uh, What are you, what? All right. Yes, maybe. I, yeah. what, depending on what this maybe, next pick is, yes, maybe. The, maybe you throw the Silas mid and then pick an easier top lane matchup right Yo, here is, I think, what's actually the pickup. Yep, there's there all kinds is. of memes. There yeah, it okay. is. Okay, so yes, I was going to do a spiel about Renekton actually caring recently and doing really good. But yes, it's a weird late pick. or It's, it's not a weird late pick. It's not a great late pick. But they, they get the NAR, and it doesn't matter. Um, so this means that we are looking at a Prestige Boy this time around to have a huge impact in the game. Yes, he has had a huge impact already throughout the series. But on a NAR, you can have so many playmaking possibilities. you got to love it. you got to look for it. And Oasis Revenant, they have drafted somewhat of a, a wonky composition, but they have some very strong synergies and some combinations that you cannot ask for anywhere else in, in League of Legends with the Caitlyn Morgana, which is just utterly broken. Uh, so we'll have to see if Slayer is really able to put those carry pants on. We've seen him been popping off. We've seen him playing well. Hasn't been the team playing well but him specifically can he do it on the Caitlyn can he just bring them to that championship win yeah you know I was talking about how the bot lane matchup is going to be favored a little bit towards the Ash Karma you know a lot of poke is exactly what you want there in Morgana Ash does very well into the Caitlyn she has all that range to make up for it but you know this is also a matchup you can mess up very easily if you get hit by too many Morgana findings you take too much damage from those traps from the Caitlyn then it can basically be over for you. So if we see a repeat performance of what we saw from uh, Slayer there in games uh, three and four, this could be the what exactly what they need to turn this one around. I really do like the draft from SBM. You know, a lot of big ultimates for Silas to steal. A lot of uh, really good play there, sending the Silas into the mid lane instead of the top lane and giving a better lane matchup there against the Renekton. Nar is a very, very good pickup. I believe it is still Renekton favorite just because of how much power he has there in the top lane and he has like the ability to just double dash on top of the nara i think it's like a 13 second cooldown on that early versus nara's jump is like 22 seconds something yeah. insane but yeah overall i think they have both teams have a lot of really great tools to work with and i could see this game five going either way <laughs> it could be i there's still time i i Usually teams like to lock in where they're going to go once we get into the second draft because it's kind of pointless to uh, mess around and do like I say. Sometimes it's not, though. Um, but Nar in the mid lane right now, Silas in the top lane could be really interesting if they swap that around or how they want to decide to play that. But I think in this game as a whole, <laughs> yes, you always say it's a team game, but right now I think it comes down to a lot of how Scouting Ground and Best Turtle are going to be playing. Because yes, we have seen top lane carry the game be a huge point of pressure and actually snowball into a win. You've seen other points, yes, but it always rides on how Scouting Ground and how Best Turtle are pacing and how they are affecting the map. Because we've seen so many times where Best Turtle gets the upper hand, pushes into Scouting Ground, and he just can't do anything, gets behind, and that's it. And that happened a little bit last game, but it didn't come out to anything for SBM this time around on the Lee Sin. He can make that stick. He can make sure you don't get to play League of Legends. And I'm looking at the team, the communication, the decision making from Oasis to bring them there and be able to help this Kindred not fall behind. Yeah, I completely agree. And you know, we are seeing a little bit of a swap. I think they're throwing Silas or oppressed E-Boy on the Silas into the mid lane and Steel Street Warrior on the NAR into the top lane. Now, again, I gotta say, I really do like the Lee Sin pick here. The Hecarim is a counter pick into the Kindred, but it's not as hard of a counter pick and doesn't provide enough, like, real personal player utility, like, uh, options to, like, really carry the game. You know, Hecarim, he goes in, he dashes onto people just doing his thing. Lee Sin, he can abuse his lead in so many more ways. So if we see a repeat here of uh, that last game, I do think this should be a lot easier uh, for SBM to get away with the lead, particularly if they do get those early kills on the lease and, and do get that early camp there onto a pressed evil hit on his Silas. Either way, we have a lot of really cool, interesting things that we're going to be able to look <laughs> at here in this final game of the series. We got Silver Scrapes playing. My man, Lemons, any other final notes you got before we go listen to this? Dr. Dele? 
I'm just so unbelievably excited to head into the spectator delay, get ready for this game, and see who comes out the champion on the other side. But we will be sending to this break that we've been highlighting to. And make sure, just please, for everybody's sake, for the community's sake, for these players' sake, just for yourself's sake, don't touch that browser. We'll be right back.
I have the utmost pleasure to bring you game number five in the Risen Divine Grand Finals. We have Oasis Revenant and Soulbound Mirage fighting for the cup, fighting for the championship as we hit the rift. I want to introduce my constant co-host in this season-long tirade of League of Legends. We've got Gofrino joining us for game number five. I do want to give a huge shout out to Daniel Sun524 for joining us for the first three games. It was awesome to have you along for the ride, and we had so much fun. And I can't wait to cast with you again. But we have the original three trio back here for the final game of the season. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, I wasn't able to watch the rest of the series because uh, I was kind of, <laughs> you know, at work. But from what I know, what you briefed me on, Lemons, uh, we have a little bit of a comeback in the maybe. Yeah, in the making here for Soulbound Mirage because they were getting smashed in those first two games, but they were able to come back in that game number three. And of course, they did get that free dub earlier on in the series since they are coming from the winner's side of the bracket. However, though, we are into this all-in-all -all crucial game five. This is what the <laughs> entire season has amounted to. So let's see what the hell these guys are planning. Yeah, and I do want to notice uh, that we have a lane swap with Steel City Warrior on that NAR in the mid lane do going to the top side. It looks like, though, we get the double lane swap here. Huber's going to the mid lane, going to throw a little wrench into the works here uh, for SP Mirage. But we are going to get, the, I guess, the original matchup that we were going to have before the lane swap. Perhaps, who knows? There's a lot of lane trickery going on here. So <laughs> the inner machinations of these teams, we sadly don't know. We are not mind readers. Um, the US government did try and make mind readers back in the 60s and 70s, but it didn't really work out, sadly. So we're on par for script, though. I just want to highlight that uh, for you, Gofarino. We've had Infernal Souls every single game. And we've started out, I, I think, two of the last two games, at least, were Ocean Dragon's first dragon. So uh, That's yeah, we're, we're right on line. We're right good. Yeah, but meanwhile, bot lane, Nox Joe getting dropped really low. Slayer with one more headshot, one more hit with the Piltover Peacemaker. Not going to hit. And that is the brutality of this. Caitlyn Morgana, of course, hitting that level two power spike first. That bind yep. landed and Nox Joe just knowing he had a cleanse there. Because if you stand around, you're going to get hit by a trap. And... Uh, Maybe Nox Joe, you could make an argument for him cleansing earlier. It would have conserved more health. Might have also conserved the havoc. But never mind. We have some double ganks. We got double ganks going down. Glacier Free is gonna hit that flash. Beautifully timed as well, but a press e boy had to burn his in the mid lane. He could tell with a lot less health than Glacier Freeze did on the top side. So maybe a little bit worse for SBM, but it's all fine and dandy. Meanwhile, the traps there have it getting hit a little too much. And uh, you gotta be able to trade though with the Mantra Q. Ooh. Mantra Q. Actually, turning a lot of damage oh, back. Flash forward. Slayer not gonna get rooted up there though. Havoc really trying to make the play. I like the initiative coming out from the bot lane of SBM. And that is a really heads up play there because if they are able to get this crucial uh, kill in this lane, especially since it would have been first blood, it mm -hmm. would have absolutely just dumpstered Slayer and Paralysis because Caitlyn thrives on being ahead in lane. But if she falls behind in lane, if she just can't have her way and then just has to suffer through her classic mid-game dip while you're ahead. Oh, here's Ooh, a little bit of a game. Nice. Great satchel. It was. Looks like the turtle still wants it, though. Ooh. He's taking some extra shots. That big rock is going to do a good amount of damage. But Glacier Free still gets out alive. That was a really good satchel charge used. Yeah, I, I didn't know you could actually do that to um cancel the um the, the, the wallop. Either way, though, I mean, still very impressive, and we do actually see the double door. Yank flash forward. It's gonna go. Uh, he lands it, I guess, but <laughs> he lands. I don't, don't know what happened. But mid lane, Press B Boy does use the heal there, uh, back from the, the or at least, I guess the increased healing from the low health. But the fact that he is gonna have to back is gonna be a bit unfortunate. Probably gonna have to burn that TP as well. Ooh, yeah, and we see the double cloth armor coming out from a prestige boy because I wanted to check his armor before that. He didn't take the armor rune because he thought he was, of course, going to Glacier Freeze in that mid lane. However, though, since it is against that Renekton, he only had 36 armor, and that doesn't mean squat against an early game Renekton. It, it Ooh, helps. That's nice, a nice finding one. there. Yeah, the shield from the Karma still a lot, though. Nox Joe gets very, very low. Sky and Ground again hovering this bot lane. Oof, like, 
There's just so much tension in the air here, Lemons, but we still haven't seen a first blood despite multiple <laughs> all in multiple yeah. games. And some, someone's good. gonna have to die eventually here. Of course, that could be a little bit of a caster curse. It might just be like True. it was like this one CLG game, I believe, back in like season five or whatever. First blood happened in like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great times. I so it's crazy though, like the first two games, if you came into game five and you're like, if th this is how it had to have been all 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 series long, right? No. First two games, Soul I'm just gonna say it, Soulbound clapped them. I mean, that was it was it was hard to watch. Um, but then with the beautiful game number three, it brings it all back and it doesn't even matter. Now it's neck and neck. Whoever wins this brings home the cup and it's such a tight game right now. Nobody wants to make that overstep. Nobody wants to make that decisive play that could end up in them dying. And you see the strain in the game. <laughs> he is. He does have the no have con, but still not enough to get out. He has the healing. The tower starting to do some damage. They really want this kill. Hubris getting low. The Sonic Wave going to connect first blood for best turtle. They're following up with more. Still City Warrior gets a kill for himself. The pressed E-Boy going in. He gets the damage, but he doesn't have the health. He's getting low. He gets taken down the trade back. Paralysis going to take some gold for the Morgana. The Havoc has a link here. Yeah, they might be able to get it with Havoc over the wall. He is just a karma. You have to be careful on that one. Paralysis might be face checking here. This is a really bad time to be doing that. The black shield comes down. Paralysis getting low. One more auto attack. Steel City Warrior claims another life. And they go up three to one early on, seven minutes. Things are starting to get rolling. God, <laughs> right as you were talking about, well, no one wants to make that big <laughs> run mistake. We see that big three man play there in the mid lane yeah. coming out from Oasis Revenant. It looks really great at first, but just takes a little bit too long to kill a pressed E boy through that stolen Dominus. And then, of course, Hebrews deciding to take that tower shot, all too unfortunately, leading to his demise and a lot of his other teammates' demise. And I won't blame Paralysis for that uh, face check death there too much, because, I mean, it's a level 4 Karma just sitting by the air raptors. Like, you don't expect that when you walk into your jungle like, wait, there's a Karma here? Hold up, now I'm dead? Alright. <laughs> a little bit, but hey. Um, you know, it's... I... It's unfortunate for a start, as a start for... Oasis Revenant, but they still have a lot of scaling options. They have a lot of things that can go right for them in the mid game. In the bot lane. Yeah, you got to be really careful though, as the engage is coming in. Slayer just wants Going to go for, for it. Kill. Might be trying to get some damage here. Best turtle in a position. He has the dragon rage kick. He didn't use it though, as he didn't Mega get Inferno. the angle. The Mega Inferno bomb in havoc. Half this health now. This is a hard hit there. Ace in the oh! hole. So close. Best turtle goes for it. He's going for the gold. And he gets the kill at least, but Scouting Ground is able to get the return. Meanwhile, top lane, there is some serious siege going on for Steel City Warrior. You gotta be able to take those, but man, what a fight on the bot side, Gofrino. God, it was so explosive too. In the end, it is that one for one, but that Kindred getting killed, that's kind of big, of course. That wait, never mind. Here comes E Boys for another. <laughs> he thought about it. He thought about that. And, uh,. I wanted to go back to that Kindred I was talking about, Scouting Ground, for those of you wondering at home. He only does have a single mark so far in this game, so potentially you could say a little bit behind the curve, but not too much Last there. Last game, he didn't get four marks for a long, long time, unfortunately. Uh, Hubris on the worst end of that trade. Yeah, that is the thing with the NAR matchup. If you are a melee, he is just able to harass you so well. Of course, thankfully, Renekton does have that slice and dice, but here comes Best Turtle. Let's see if he can make the magic happen. There is he no Dragon's have, Rage. He does have double Rage Bar. He does get the healing. It doesn't even matter. Best Turtle picks up a kill. Yeah, not having Dominus there kind of secured his death. He did have the flash, though, so maybe Hubris, after landing that um, Ruthless Predator stun, might have been able to just flash out and stay alive. Either way, though, the result is the same. Now, Zero and Tune, this Crocodile, who is typically this early game dominant champ. However, though, you're, of course, going against that Gnar as this melee champion, so it is just so annoying with him yeah. constantly proccing those hyper procs on you for your max percentage HP. So let's see how Hubris decides to try and come back at this. He does have the build draw to Cutlass now, which will help him stay on Steel City Warrior. And there's one worrying thing about this game right now for me, and it's 
it's worrying for SBM <laughs> because about a 30 CS lead for Slayer in the bot side on this Caitlyn with the combination of the Caitlyn Morgana, and he's already been doing so much in this oh, game early on. Oh, look at this. Hubris might be in some trouble here. Here comes the knockback right into Best Turtle, who kicks him back under tower. That's unfortunate. The flash coming forward. Still City Warrior is going to be traded for it. Best Turtle oh. also blocks his path. Ooh, that feels so bad. The tower shot was locked onto him. It anyways, was, it so. was. But like, still. <laughs> yeah, slightly mis-executed in the top lane there, I want to say. However, though, technically, putting this Renekton even further behind is great. He does get that trade kill, but we might have a bit of a dive here on the bot side against this rather weak bot lane right now since uh, it's an Ash with just a Vamp Scepter going against that Caitlyn with the a crit cloak and a bf sword like that is so deadly to deal with at this point in the game this caitlin yeah. definitely getting her away as you were mentioning that cs leap but if our uh, observer mr meow meow could uh take a look at the gold here you can already see that's positioned into about a 900 gold lead yeah. and that's more or less exactly where caitlin wants to be except for you know of course more gold but still should have oh, enough just... on this back to finish the infinity edge which is going to be a massive spike he can look to push this advantage maybe they get the first tower in this bot lane or maybe they're content with the plates they grab the dragon and maybe lane swap top lane to try and pick up some yeah. more plates with this caitlin because you do of course have the caitlin ziggs combo which is great for taking down these early towers um it would really help if they did have a rift herald but <laughs> Scouting ground, of course, is on the Kindred. Cancel out the Rift Herald, but yeah. you have to remember, best Turtle VN, a little bit fed on this lease and can very easily kill this Kindred. And I do want to go back to, uh, we already talked about a decent amount, but back to this Caitlyn. I mean, yeah, 40, 40 CS lead this early on as a Caitlyn is really good, but he's also getting plates. And as you said, if they transfer him to another lane and get more plates and just use Caitlyn on how Caitlyn should be used, you're going to be gathering so much gold and this gold lead that they have developed is not really going to matter because you're going to have this carry that is super, super strong. And if you can play around it, you're going to have a, a big avenue to win this. Yeah, because, I mean, people, they have um, started using a new Caitlyn build, which I have been told kind of circumvents her mid-game power dip to it um it depends on who you ask however though it is the infinity edge into storm Razor, into essence reaver build which i do find interesting because you are of course lacking in that attack speed which is always nice as caitlin to hammer out more headshots of course so just having that much raw ad that much raw crit let's see absolutely shred through people yeah indeed well we are going to be taking a small little break while we get this all sorted out and make sure we get back into the game so don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen a little bit of an anticlimactic moment here as we get a pause through but just having some lag issues in the mid lane so we'll be right back
Welcome back onto the Rift, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of lag delay and some other issues along that, but we get right into fighting as that might be a little bit unfair. Hubris is going to be the unfortunate victim of a pause as uh, Steel City Warrior and Best Turtle make the best of the situation. Yep, getting some free leather handbags in that top lane. It feels bad because <laughs> Hubris is wearing a... Uh my favorite or at least one of my favorite Renekton skins in the cowboy croc because yeah it's just a little hat on him I love he's just like a big crocodile and he has a tiny hat either it's way the though, crocodile being... that ate crocodile dundee it's true that is coming <laughs> from dragon going over to the ace eh, oasis revenant though evening up the dragons here and we are gonna get a mountain soul for the first time in this I... series lemons I'm I'm a little sad at our script writers not gonna lie gopher um I'm a little mad. I was told we had a script. We were going to follow it. We were going to go it's all. It's because um, Joe is out. Ah, uh, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> the but evil hot is... dog betrayed us. Yeah. <laughs> so the script does not live anymore. It is over. But Scouting Ground trying to make his own script here. Going in very heavily. Mega Inferno Bomb going to be there. Oh, Flash from Best Turtle. Nice move there. He wants to continue the fight, though. Might be in some trouble. Steel City Warrior. Coming in there, but the rage bar is not going to last long, and they back off. Whew, and that was a very dangerous situation for that Lee Sin to be in, and thankfully for Best Turtle VN, he is able to get on out of that one and keep his bounty for himself. Because giving over a bounty to um any of those three members that were up there, the Ziggs, he can scale fairly well and one shot the back line. Well. Your champion backline, I should say, not the minion backline, very easily <laughs> once he gets about three, three and a half items. Of course, the Kindred, Little Lady carrying the jungle, scales very well. And then, of yeah. course, getting Hubris a little bit back into this game would have been awesome sauce, sure. too. However, though, awesome sauce. a flash and uh, this Lee Sin is out. But look at this. He has the Rift Herald, and we have both junglers hovering towards the Scudlers. Uh, we might see a bit of uh, Crab Wars here. Could be. You already see Best Turtle securing that one. He's going to be running away. He does have the Rift Herald available, so I would like to see that being used at some point here soon uh, just to get some pressure down as this tower is just going to fall. They're so good at taking it. It's soon to fall, at least, as the Caitlyn Morgana pressure is unrelenting. Yeah, and I mean, that's just the item differential right now. This Infinity Edge already being complete for this Caitlyn. Oh. Just so massive and you have a little bit of a lane gank happening here it might be a little bit tricky though if they <laughs> land the bind into trap oh here. no this is going to be the complete turnaround if oh, you see no, what's the going on on the start. screen the tp from the meganar he's not going to have it for long but havoc might have stayed and he's down this is a turn fight this is 3v3 the engage lambs or spike comes out the mega inferno bomb right on top of everything and this is looking all in favor of Oasis Revenant as they're taking kills left and right. The shutdown going through. And the ace in the hole is not going to be enough to take Nox Joe, but the flash will be from Paralysis. And they have evened up the gold. They have evened up the kills. And they are actually making a name for themselves in this game number five. Got it. <laughs> You said it so yourself when they were initially coming down, like, oh no, it's all over. But thanks to that Lamb's respite, thanks to getting that early kill, thanks to picking up some other kills as well, we don't see a single member, if I'm not mistaken, on the side of Oasis Revenant drop there since everybody is there for the party and they make like bandits. In a party, you have Glacier Freeze overextending he's just trying to get the tower at that point but the south of charge not going to be enough the tower not at 25 percent and he falls very unfortunate because now we see that rip trail being blocked in this lane they already have those three casters and they can very easily take this turret here if i'm not mistaken because that rip trail should take it down about well over half of it never mind the minions died right before that rip trail which is really unfortunate because of the are still there. Cupris is going to find Turtle. Oh, best Turtle. You face check right into the bush full of no your kick. enemies. The kick there, but it doesn't matter. Best Turtle falls. And that is just so unfortunate there because at least going to be dropping there, giving a kill back over to this Renekton because we mentioned earlier that this Renekton would absolutely love a kill in his back pocket to help him come back a little in this game. 
as uh, now it is just going to be the turret taking game here for the side of Oasis Revenant. They Boy, already had taken that low with their uh, mid laner, boldly sacrificing his life, and this is going to give him very nice prio over this up and coming mountain dragon. We already see them clearing out this vision in the enemy jungle, and I want to see them try and drop some deep wards here. They don't really have too many of their trinkets available, just that one blue trinket. However, though, we should have some sight stone wards here, if I'm not mistaken. And take a quick check on scouting grant. Yep, that was his fourth mark there, picked up from the Gromp. So now he's sitting pretty on that 575 auto attack range, right as this dragon spawns to see if Best Turtle VN can get the redemption arc going as he is caught. Yeah, Hubris on the backside of it. He uses the slice and dice. Here oh. comes the bomb, and the damage is alive for Glacier Freeze, who's been chunking those things all game long. And man, the, the damage potential right now for Oasis Revenant is so, so scary. You have Slayer just absolutely popping off on this Kalen. Glacier Freeze starting to get into it himself and things getting scarier and scarier by the minute for SBM as Best Turtle. He's going to get hit very hard there, but not going to go down or anything like that. Dragon did it go though as a two to one now as the first Mountain Dragon of the game is secured by Scouting Grounds. And that is really scary here for the side of Oasis Revenant because, I mean, you got the Kindred, you got the Six, you got the Kaelin, all very well scaling picks, and they just happen to all have leads right now. If I'm not mistaken, I'll take a quick tab at the gold. Never mind. Okay. Oh, and Chance of Crystal Arrow that. barely missed Slayer. He did get the kickback. But look at the damage. That was one shot on the Nox show. The TP comes in, ace in the hole. It almost secures the kill. Meanwhile, Turtle. Best Turtle getting dragged down in the backside of the fight. He does get over the wall, but man, that is real rough. Mega Inferno Bomb, that's it. <laughs> that's the thing when you're against the Ziggs and Caitlyn. It's like, all right, you know what? I got out of that. I still have 300 health. I'll farm this minion wave. Then you just see the ulti coming out. Ah, shucks. And ah, shucks, really it does happen to be as Slayer. He's actually just one-manning this turret right now, even though the rest of his team Way off from him, wisely backing off now. That's just Warriors kind of coming around. Does have to be careful. And it's kind of interesting here, Lemons, because, I mean, Solba and Mirage, they were the ones who started that. We saw Best Turtle yeah. go in with that Flash ulti, and they weren't able to secure the kill onto that Caitlyn just with how far behind Nox Joe is on this Ash, and they didn't really have any other burst to complement that, which is just so tragic because... If they pick up the shutdown on that Caitlyn and let's Nox Joe come back a little into the game, it helps, of course, pick up some tempo in your favor. And also, it could have opened up that Rift Herald for you, potentially. However, though, history not always on your side, and it just so happens that you're not able to get that kill. You lose the Rift Herald, and now this team, with the sieging power of that Caitlyn, of that Ziggs, now they have a Rift Herald in their back pocket, Lemon, so you can just have the Rift Herald charge into a tower that has roughly 80 or 75% health, and then just immediately throw a satchel at it afterwards for, you know, a free turret pickup. Yeah, it, it, the, the thing is, though, there is scaling on both sides of the Rift here, and there is some possibilities on both sides getting further along, but man, you look at those kill scores, I mean, if... Two kills across the board. The synergy is online there for uh, Oasis Revenant, but it's it's awesome to see the two carries in Glacier Freeze Slayer. The the members who have been doing so well in the series despite the early two losses, being able to continue that. Oh, Hubris, Hubris might danger. not be able to continue here as the kick comes out immediately. Steel City Warrior stacking up the Mega Narbar. He doesn't get the stun into the wall, but Hubris falls. Scouting Ground wanted to go forward, but is not going to commit. And just a little too late there on this Kindred. Had he been down there a two or three seconds earlier, that fight could have gone much differently. However, though, since they did commit the Nar Ultimate, since they did commit the uh, Dragon's Rage there from Best Turtle, they were, of course, able to secure that kill, even through the Dominus, which is great, just further, you know, destroying this Crocodile who's ha been having a tough time. And once Steel City Warrior completes his Blade of the Rune King on the Nar, that is going to be such a pain to deal with for the Renekton because he's going to be constantly hitting you with those max percentage HP auto attacks. Then he procs the Hyper. Oh, wait, we might have a little bit oh, of a Steel City Warrior. Nah. 
<laughs> All right, Paralysis was hovering there. He had the Moby, sees Naruto running across the rift, but decides to Naruto <laughs> run away from the enemy top lane. Naruto running in a dress. I like it. Uh, Scuttle Crab has been secured here for Scouting Ground. And speaking of Scouting Ground, I do want to get a little check in. Still at those four stacks. So it has hit that initial power spike, but hasn't done anything further from that. Now we do have a dragon spawning in 50 seconds. Oh, that's a great Ooh, ult. And the Slayer will knock up the Black Shield's not going to do much for long, but Slayer got away from it. He's using the kite. He's getting the damage. He gets one. Paralysis is going to be in some trouble. Look how much that ace in the hole just did. The damage is so dirty. The, oh, oh, the, the dark lands. binding! That's it, the cleanse a little bit late. Nox Joe goes down there, continuing this. Still City Warrior gonna go right into it, but here comes the kick. It's not enough, he doesn't have it. And it's going to be Best Turtle falling in the arms of the entire team of Oasis Revenant. And they can just turn onto this dragon if they want to and secure Soul Point for themselves. God, and once again, we see Soulbound Mirage. They try and go for that big play there, but it just backfires on them as they just they just can't handle the damage thrown their way in. Three kills went over to the side of Oasis Revenant, and each one of those kills went to one of these very dangerous scaling picks. How much damage that one bouncing bomb did to Steel City Warrior. It's a lot of damage coming down from the Rift Herald there. Steel City Warrior tried to protect as long as he could. But the tower is going to fall. Soul point secured. And gold lead hovering around 5,000. And that's a very brutal point to be at if you are on the side of Soulbound Mirage. Because, I mean, you're facing all these scaling picks. Sure, you do have scaling in that ash much later on. Sure, a press E-boy. He's going to scale very well. But I just feel like the scaling on the side of Waste is Revenant one or two steps maybe even three steps if you really want to argue for it ahead of the competition right now scaling team they happen to be one that is ahead right now they are on that soul point if they do manage to get that that is going to be a fairly decently noticeable thing against this enemy team comp that uh Sultan mirage has drafted because when you're behind and you have to deal with those extra assists, you have to deal with that extra shield, it could be so much hard here to just try and get kills oh. that would have been once easy. Look at that! Oh my god. I'm yeah. sorry. That just distracted me. My little play-by-play -play brain. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of damage from the NAR. Not gonna lie. Uh, but able to press him off. He didn't get the kill. He did force the back and he's gonna be able to take that tower at least. And I'm kind of curious why Keepers did go for the Burke Treads here, because I feel like that was a little bit of bait by, because, I mean, you aren't sure. Mega Nar does have a lot of crowd control, but you really need those Ninja Tab Eyes when you start falling behind against the Gnar. Like, so much of his damage is just based off of those Hyper Procs, and he does auto you three times. Sure, the Tab Eyes won't reduce the damage from the Hyper Proc, but yeah. you are reducing damage from those three autos thanks to the passive and then of course thanks to that armor you got from the tabloids so i think the mercrits might be a little bit of a bait purchase here as uh still say where he's looking for the <laughs> look at that little bumper he's so cute he just wagged his little tail he's ready for action i mean i hope you're ready for action it is game number five if you're just <laughs> landing and you see kind of, oh yeah oh, oh. Wait, we're playing the next game, guys. I'm gonna take a snooze. Like, no, like everything's on the line <laughs> right now. I mean, sure, even if you do lose this, you got second place, and that is still excellent. But yeah, to go to I... game five, oh, scouting ground. We're gonna see some action here. I want to say, but that's turtle. He's holding so... on. On there it is. <laughs> that's just <laughs> so cool. best turtle TP coming in a little bit late. They're going on to Steel City Warrior now. He's almost got Meganar. Press E boy. Did get into the fight, but Caitlyn coming down. Look how much damage he does. Oh, I bet Slayer. Well. He's not going to, though. I, the one thing beforehand I wanted to point out is how far Slayer was ahead. He's got so much gold, and here comes the ace in the hole. Not going to do it. One more turn. Let's see. Ooh, a lot of damage there on the Havoc. But I, I did want to say that uh, Caitlyn's at 12k almost, and uh, Nox Joe just passed 8. So it's a huge differential. The item difference is monumental. He's got three items completed already. And so the Caitlyn has to be the focus here. 
for SBM. Yeah, because eighty carries, if they fall behind their competition, they feel it so much more because you desperately need that gold to scale up into the game. Now, okay, Nox Joe, he's able to finish that second item, but you're still a full item behind your competition right now. You're also down three levels. I believe Nox Joe should be fairly close to at least hitting level 13, but if you're two levels down, that's roughly equivalent to about five to 600 gold. And all those stats, they mattered that much more on 80 carries here, Lemons. And as Caitlyn for Slayer, he's well surpassed his mid game power dip at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting very mighty and fine. Even has the QSS now in case that um, Enchanted Crystal Arrow does land on him, in case Steel City Warrior gets that huge R ultimate on him. And if you do really want to be flashy, you can, of course, cleanse the uh, Dragon's Rage while you're flying in the air and then flash. I don't think we'll see that this game, but, you know, something to keep an eye out for. And another thing to keep an eye out for is this dragon spawning in about 20 yeah. seconds. Yeah, it's going to be so oh, no damage. Pressed E-Boy. He's the same level as the enemy AD carry. The Enchanted Chris Arrow missed by Nox Joe. He tried to get the early engagement on to Glacier Freeze, but he didn't. They have to run here. I don't know if they have the positioning or the manpower for it. Uh, as you see, Still City Warrior Meganar just ended so this is not the time where you want to be taking a fight and this is the most crucial moment this is the soul this is where a lot of the power in the late game is going to be and a pressed e-boy might just be caught out here he's going to get damaged flag. down the Best dragon has, has the been started here. he does he has the flank he doesn't have nobody has vision on him here comes the ace in the hole gonna do a little bit to Nox Joe but the full engage is coming through best turtle looking to go for the dragon he steals it he gets the objective he gets out but does his team as everybody is falling Steel City Warrior has the Meganar the ulti into the wall but it's not enough to do anything as nobody falls on Oasis Revenant yes they lose the dragon why are you backing their best turtle get out of there my friend as they get the dragon at least buying themselves some time in terms of soul, but you still have to be careful about the Baron. And you have to be careful about your base here. You have all five members just barreling towards this mid lane inhibitor turret. Yeah. It's a Caitlyn Ziggs kindred composition. They will take this in a lickety split, but look, this you lane from turtle lane, e boy. Sonic is not gonna hit. The tower does fall. Slayer up front, up in the middle of it all. Be looking for some damage here. Does get slowed. Oh no. Is this it? Best turtle. Are you going to take it? Do you make the move? Slayer mm. goes forward with it. He's going to be able got to do the it angle. Again. He's got it's the not going to happen. They're going to back off. Ah. But you give up that mid lane inhibitor turret, which can be very big here. That exposed inhibitor just makes the game that much more dangerous here for the side of Soulbound Mirage, because now any mistake you make easily leads that inhibitor falling. Of course, I mean, that turret would have fallen very easily anyways to the double AD carry Zix composition, um, if that's any surprise to anyone. However, though, now that you have that ultimatum in the mid lane, with this Baron being on the table, it makes it just a little bit more scary for Soulbound Mirage to try and contest that, because you have to remember here, Lemons, that he can't dilly dally around too long, or else the enemy minions might just shove into that tower, might just take your inhibitor for right out under your nose, and yeah. that would be kind of big since I believe the level advantage overall is in the favor of Oasis Revenant here. So their minions should have the boosted stats against enemy minions, allowing them to constantly push. And yeah. if you ignore those waves for a little too long, you might just lose an inhib. I, I'm just getting so worried. I mean, they're about to have, it's a little bit off, but it can change really quick. You're about to have a flame horizon on the ADCs for Slayer on bot lane. So like, that is never a position you want to be in, especially against the Caitlyn who can just pick you off. Yes, armor helps, but when you're just firing across from the back line, it just gets so, so hard to play against. And we've seen it time, time again in this game that they've been able to play the better team fight so far. And I love this vision denial coming out from the side of Oasis Revenant right now. It's getting them so much prowl on this band. It's already getting shredded fairly quickly. Both top laners have their teleports here, but that Meganar is timing out here. So that is going to be a huge thing to be watching out here for as heal off is going to happen. And Ooh. you have to remember here, Lemons, that if Soulbound Mirage, they all try and funnel through one corridor. Well, the Ziggs just throws down the Hextech Minefield. He throws down the Mega Inferno Bomb. And with his current build, he just oh. really, yeah, like 
Thankfully, Nox Joe, he does have the lifesteal on this Ash, but with only 38 magic resist and with 33 of that being ignored by Glacier Freeze right now, he's more or less doing true damage to the Sadie carry. And uh, now imagine if he gets a centered shot from that Mega Inferno Bomb. That is one little cue from the Ziggs, and it took off 35% <laughs> of that Ash's health very yeah. easily. And this is a very rough time to be in here for the side of Soulbound Mirage. It is indeed. Scott and Ground one stack away from the next level in the hunts and going to be looking for that one, no doubt. Has Ash marked right now, so Nox Joe is the target if they can get on top of him. Slayer pushing away in the mid lane. Just a little bit of a farm fiesta going on. We have a minute until one of the most crucial dragons comes up, if not the crucial one um we have if 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 spm get this dragon it is three to three in dragons and we go to a seventh dragon and you couldn't ask for anything better in if in the final game of this entire tournament yeah because we're now 33 minutes into the game here lemons like it's still anyone's game even though definitely there is a noticeable lead here for the side of oasis remnant it definitely does feel like they have tempo but so by Mirage, they're not out of this by any means. Like, if they're able to get a good fight around this dragon, pick that up, put themselves on that soul point, look towards yeah. that Baron, and then if they grab the Baron, they can look to really swing this game back in their favor here because with only two turrets taken around the map, just the bot outer and top outer, there is a lot of sitting gold just in these lanes on those turrets. And uh, we see the posturing for this dragon, the early... Oh. Just gang, gang, ward dropping here. I want to preface, Steel City Warrior is about to have Meganar. So he will have it for the fight if he doesn't pop it a little early. And so now he it's about positioning. It. Yeah, he did. He needs to get in the fight at Oof. least. They have started up the dragon and the shots are raining from Slayer. The dragon's getting Still very low. They need to make a move. Left. The root, they're going to just That's go on to Beth Turtle. He gets his GA pop. That's really early for that. The Mega Inferno Bomb from the Silas not going to connect. He does go down. Lambs are spite right into the wall. That was a huge knockback from Steel City Warrior. Is he going to have it? No, he's not. As they just get decimated on the rift, the Dragon Soul goes over, and Oasis Revenant have taken the fight and taken everything. Got it. Now they can look towards that mid lane inhibitor. Then they can look towards that Baron. And then they can look towards ending the game here. What a beautiful setup there by Oasis Revenant. We saw the trap set up there. Best turtle, he couldn't do anything there. He only used the resonating strike, and they might just be going for the throat here, Lemon says. They're pushing Good. in very hard. That tower in danger. Look at that They're satchel. so far behind. Yeah. They don't have what it takes. Go Farino. They wanted it. They saw it. They take the championship. Oasis Revenant are crowned the Risen Divine Grand Final Champions. Oh, my God. <laughs> And what a hell of a fight to end the series there. Like, I thought they would just get the inhibitor, look towards the Baron, but Oasis Revenant showing why they made it this far. They go immediately for the throat and great googly moogly. They just basically behead the competition here. Let's call them the guillotine with uh, just how devastating that last push was. I mean, that was incredible. The decision making from Oasis, knowing they could end the game in that one moment, that one mistake, that one team fight just got them the win. And that is what you like to see. It was the biggest roller coaster I have ever been on, Gofrino. Game one, game two were awful from Oasis Revenant. And to come back in the last two games to essentially get a reverse sweep because there was no game one. They had a free win in that one. So to come in and get a reverse sweep after that, it just shows so, so much from their team as a whole. And I'm here for it. I love it. They they knew when to press the gas and they did it perfectly. Yeah, I'm so happy here that I got to see all of these players' journeys here for the most part because... It was us and Mowgli here on the desk and behind the booth for the most part of the season. So we got to see these players throughout their journeys, throughout the bracket, throughout the playoffs, throughout the uh, groups. And it was great to see how they all shaped up. And I mean, Oasis Revenant, they deserve that win very hard with how well they've played just throughout the entirety of the split.
and we got to give all the praise in the world to Oasis Revenant, but I got to calm down for a second. I got to break it down for, oh, for Joel Don Morrell. Oh. I know, I know. What is this? What is this? No, but I, we've been there for Soulbound Mirage's extreme climb to the top. They had everything they needed. They were winning left and right. They smashed the competition in the last game of the the series on Thursday and the first two in this one, I thought it was over. I thought it was going to be a quick 3-0. I thought Soulbound were going to win and they were going to take home that cup. But they showed so much grit, so much heart, and so much passion in this season. You can't help but appreciate it. And I hope I see every single one of these players again because I think they have so much potential. And just the growth in one season was incredible. So if you're listening to this, guys, on Soulbound Mirage, please stick with it. Please keep grinding. I want to see you again. I want to be yelling your name over the mic again. So props to you guys. What a wonderful journey. To end second is nothing to scoff at. And good job. But got to turn it over to Oasis Revenant. What a run indeed. They knocked out Soulbound in the first place. And then they knock him out again in the last. God, and it definitely was a hell of a journey here. Sadly, I couldn't see the whole series, so I don't have the full context here. But Lennon, <laughs> you happen to be around here for all four games. Any uh, MVPs you want to dole out here? Since this is, oh, final, uh, this is probably the most special MVP of the season, except for maybe a Christmas tournament uh, MVP. I, I hear you get gifts from uh, <laughs> Travi. You doing Ooh, that? Oh, Travi gifts. Santa Travi. I love it. Um. I uh, the immediate thought I love the performance from Slayer. I love the performance from Glacier Freeze. If it wasn't for that Mordekaiser performance from Hubris in the second to last game, this would have been over. He completely manhandled that game and there was no if and buts about it. He dominated. And I think if it wasn't for that, for that momentum swing, for him getting that confidence, you wouldn't have seen this game five go the way it did. So I, I, I got to give it to Hubris in my thoughts. I think he did wonderful. And yes, he didn't have the most pop-off performance on the Renekton, but he was a huge integral part to the game. And I mean, this is just one of those games where the rest of your team wins. You lose top, you just hit them up in all chat and say, Yo, I'm getting four times tilt proof after this game, which I mean, the mental, it is strong with hubris because top laners, when they fall behind, usually they get a little mopey. Uh not not to rage against you top laners out there. I know it is a tough life in that top lane, but props to hubris for having that strong mental even though he is on that island kind of isolated not really getting any help but even then with all that focus in the end he still ends positive despite all those ganks just completely putting him behind over and over and uh if he's your series mvp lemons i, I think we ought to get him in here for a little bit of an interview we will get him in here i'm sure mogul will be working on that at some point to get him to talk to us for a little bit uh, i do want to give a quick shout out though it is the end of the season we have crowned our champions it is oasis revenant who take the first ever championship for the risen divine grand finals and if you they're not grand finals the risen divine league sorry and if you liked what you saw here throughout the season throughout this just series this one series if you just watched one game whatever if you liked what you saw please go check us out i mean it is you just type in exclamation point divine in the chat you can get the information for the uh form to apply or just to see the information go to the website and check it out we would love to see you in next season if possible so make sure if you're interested go check it out um and i'm sure we will be getting him in here very quickly go for you hopefully yeah sometimes it is a little bit finicky i can understand the um there is probably a lot of emotions running through these players right now like <laughs> You just won the first ever Divine League Grand Finals, like you said. Like that is a hell of an accomplishment. You know, not anyone else is gonna get a say first here except for Oasis Revenant. So you know what? Oasis Revenant, if you're ever making a resume under your accomplishments, put down a first time ever Divine League Grand Finals champions and your employers will go, Cool. What's a League of Legends? And you'll have to explain to them. But you are first, and that is a hell of an accomplishment. And so props to these players. I mean We've been giving props to everybody here for the past several minutes on the desk, and I don't think we can really uh, shower enough praises here for the most part. Yeah, exactly. I just think it, it's uh, I, I really hope that they're happy. I hope that they're excited for this um, and and hopefully it lights a fire under him for next season as well. And I think we have been joined here by the man himself. How are you feeling today after that win champion? 
uh, pretty good, I guess. Uh, I think I played pretty bad for the most part, but that's life, you know. <laughs> so hey, for, you know, want... I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> but I mean, you said yourself that you felt you played bad. Sadly, I did not get to watch the um, earlier three games in the series. <laughs> I kind of had a rush home from work to uh, get on this last cast. However, though, I mean, you felt you played bad, but we were noting how uh, you were able to keep your head in the game. And so how was the mental for you throughout this series? Because if was it a roller coaster? Was it very rock solid for you? Uh, I mean, I think anyone that tells you their mental is rock solid is a liar. <laughs> but, uh, i love it i love it I, I try to keep my head on my shoulders obviously and i got pretty tilted in the second game yeah because yeah. i just didn't feel like we were all going on the same call like we were all playing as a team and we kind of ended up just bleeding out so it's a pretty frustrating way to lose but we're pretty good like all, all five of us at just resetting going into the next draft and like what do we need to change and different, differentiating what was an issue with draft and what was an issue with play. So that way we were easily able to reset. Well, not easily, but able to reset our mentals. Yeah, I like it. And I, I, the reason I gave you MVP was for that crucial turnaround in the, uh, in the third game where your performance on Mordekaiser, just to us or to me, I guess, uh, and I'm sure to Daniel's son, it just felt like it was a rallying fa- flag for your team. And it just felt like you guys were just turned on after that and the first two games they were real rough there's no there's no if and buts about it i mean yeah they, they came out swinging real hard and but the fact that you guys took those punches and you just popped off in that game and after that just seemed like everything was fitting in place was it was such a momentum swing yeah i mean really anything like that can swing momentum pretty quick i mean i do think i played well that game you know definitely better than all the other games but once I got that solo kill top, it felt like, you know, it was a little easier to win the game. Like, we were a little <laughs> bit more in it, especially in that kind of matchup. Like, Mordekaiser into Jax, it's a counter matchup. Yeah. But if Mordekaiser gets ahead with the Bramble Vest and the Ninja Tabbies, he can actually just win it for a very long time. So that's a really useful thing to have on your team, especially when they have so much dive with the Hecarim and the Jax, and I can just kind of take them out. Yeah, and I, I have to give a special shout out to Slayer, though. I think he had a really good performance during all of this. I just want to ask, though, like, as a whole, when you guys were preparing for the drafts and things like that, where were your heads at during that, especially game four and five? Like, did you guys have a, a new like a new way that you wanted to approach it? Did you guys change anything between the games and the, how you were approaching the drafts or in communication in general? Because it just seemed like completely different in those last two games. Yeah, we did change everything. We decided <laughs> that we could just we could just win if we just drafted things that win their lanes, like win their matchups. Yeah. So we focused on getting Scouting Ground or Chise, a strong champion in the jungle. He's really good at Kindred. It's a good aggressive pick and it scales mm-hmm. well. And we focused on getting a good bot lane because we thought their bot lane was like the weakest link of the team. Especially because we think ours is really good. Yeah. <laughs> so the first pick, the first pick, Ash, for example, in the game four, Ash basically always wins lane. So that's a really useful pick to have. Mm-hmm. And then we just pick the Kindred for scouting ground, and it's a really also solid pick to have. So yeah, we just basically went more aggressive in the draft because yeah. we thought we could just be the better players if we played with our heads in the game. So now knowing that information a little bit behind the scenes, when you got the Morgana Caitlyn, like, was it just, okay, we win? Like, Slayer is going to carry this and he's just going to win the game? Or, uh, I think what we said was, it literally, loading into game, we said, if Lee Sin doesn't snowball this game insanely hard, there's no way we lose. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was our thoughts going into it. And, uh, I mean, Lee Sin did kind of snowball. But it was on bit. NAR, and I think that champ's useless, so it was fine. <laughs> well, hey, you did come out on top, so it is a, a dub to you. But I did want to give you a moment to give a shout-out to anybody you can think of, or if you want to give a word to the community who's been following. We've had a pretty active chat tonight. I don't know if you uh, want to say any words or any last thoughts. Uh, shout-out to all my teammates, obviously. All right, I like so, it. Good start. Chise Chaperone. <laughs> 
Reckled, and Paralysis. Thanks for playing out the season. Thanks for keeping your heads on as best you can. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to all my friends for watching. <laughs> but I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, I appreciate your time, man. Go enjoy the win, and congratulations on being the first champions of the Risen Divine League. Thank you, thank you. Have a good night. You as well. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in for this evening of action. It has been a crazy up and down series but we have arrived at the final moment and it is oasis revenant who come away with the championship all props to them and it has been a long night so we're going to go ahead and call it i do want to give a couple quick shout outs here first of all to risen as a whole thank you so much for putting this on for us and for letting us be a part of this broadcast it has been a hell of a ride and a hell of a journey and we just appreciate every moment we get to represent you guys here in the casting booth so thank you to that thank you to the teams for participating for giving us these stories to tell over such a long period of time and thank you least uh, last but not least, I guess, to the community itself for coming out here and joining us for these games. It's always nice to see you guys chatting away in the Twitch chat. But it is going to be a final goodbye from me, Lemons, and Gofrino, And with the Pogus Productions always in Risen, we've got Mowgli the cat behind us. So thank you all again, and we'll see you next time for next season of the Risen Divine League.